college football fans, and welcome to tonight's broadcast here between the West Texas A&M Buffaloes and the Texas A&M Commerce Alliance here from the Palace on the Plains, Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium. I'm Lucas Kinsey alongside Bryce Sheets, and we're glad to have you with us for what we expect to be an exciting matchup. These two longtime LSC rivals meet Bryce for the 35th time, and for what will be the final time here in the Lone Star Conference, Texas A&M Commerce, they'll be moving up to Division I next season. They accepted the invitation to join the Southland Conference in the fall of 2022. So I think it's fitting that you look at this last battle here uh, in the conference with these two foes. It should be for something important. That's exactly what we have tonight. It's a chance to vault to the top of the conference standings. And, you know, there's something that a lot of folks, Bryce, did not expect, at least from West Texas A&M, right, when, right. we're, when we're sitting here uh, about a month ago, WT had yeah. just lost its third game of the year actually on the road uh, in a heartbreaker to yes. Western Oregon, a game yes. that, that most folks thought that WT was going to win. But here we are, 4-3 four and three versus 4-3. Four 4-3 and three. Four and three versus 4-3. Three. 3-1 three and one in conference versus 3-1 and one in conference. And you've got the number one offense in the conference, that's WT, and the number one defense in the conference, that's Commerce. And Commerce only allows 15 points per ball game. They score 34 on average. WT scores 38 on average. So who's going to break in this one tonight? And again, the battle between these two clubs have gone has gone back for several years, but really intensified probably in the last eight to nine years and has been a really good battle ever since. You know, for West Texas A&M, uh, We've talked to the coaches, talked to a few of the players. What do you think, Bryce, has been the biggest difference in what West, Tex what West Texas A&M has been able to do over the last two weeks in beating, first of all, Angelo State here at home. Right. And then you go on the road and take on Eastern New Mexico, which we've been to Portales plenty a of times. Hard place to play. It is. Yeah. What's been the difference? I, I just think that after that Western Oregon game, I think they were very disappointed in the way they played on the field. In other words, there wasn't a lot of emotion. There wasn't a lot of oomph going out there for WT. And so they took it upon themselves. I don't know if they had a team meeting, met with coaches, or if they just individually decided that, you know, we need to pick up the pace a little bit. We need to pick up the tempo. And they did so in a big way. They love playing here, obviously. They love playing here. But when you go on the road, it is hard. And so when they went to Eastern, they took that momentum with them. And really, the defense played incredibly well. They dominated in that ball game. And yeah, five turnovers, right. uh, five straight possessions, which right. was incredible. Now, for Texas A&M Commerce, four and three, they may be the best four and three team in the country. Yeah, they really are. They've lost to some very uh, strong programs, basically, this season. Of course, Midwestern State's their lone conference loss, but they also played Fort Lauderdale. They played another Florida school that, again, both of those are highly ranked this year or hardly thought of this yep. year. And so one of them's the number one team in the country. And so that makes a bit of a difference. And so um, their uh, off conference schedule has been solid. And I think they feel, Coach Bayless feels like that's helped them prepare for the conference and what they've got to do. And so I think really, other than Midwestern, this will be their, a big test for them tonight, too. And we'll see, you know, the Buffaloes may have something to say about that, about Absolutely. being the best 4-3 and three team in the country. So we do know this, that right now, as you look at it, Midwestern State is at the top of the uh, Lone Star Conference standings, and it appears to be really between about four or even five teams. Yes. Whoever can win the conference yes. may be maybe one of the only teams uh, from the conference that obviously makes the playoffs. Yeah, and that's true. And again, the way they do the seeding, too, as we get a little closer here in the next couple of weeks, they'll have that set up as well. And so we'll find out where everybody falls as far as the conference is concerned. And the nice thing, depending on how you look at it, I guess a little bit for the conference is it is very balanced and it is very um, very challenging for each team each week. And so I know the conference likes that. Yeah. The coaches may not like it as much, but I know the conference loves it. Well, it is a pink out here tonight at Buffalo Stadium as we promote Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so you'll see a lot of pink out in the crowd. We have provided some pink as well in uh, the wardrobe tonight. And again, for a great cause uh, for breast cancer awareness. We're going to step aside for a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll hear from WT head coach Hunter Hughes. It's the Buffaloes and the Lions in a critical conference clash right here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. This is not another story. This is not another dream.
Days are built on mornings. And Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings. Burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm. Yeah. All right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast. Topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. Uh, I gotta go one play, one series, one quarter, one half, and one game. I mean, I think everything comes down to that. We had a lot of good plays in the game Saturday, and we had some not so good plays. But you gotta play that one play and then let it go. So, our kind of philosophy in Mantra right now is win the first play. You win the first down, then go win that series. You win that series, go win that quarter. Win that quarter, go win that half. And it translates into it. You heard a lot of guys saying that, you know, let's go win this play. Let's, let's start with this play. Let's start with this play. So we got our hands full. Commerce is an extremely talented team. Uh, and uh, Miklo's back running the show, and uh, he's got two games under his belt. I thought he struggled a little bit his first game back. He got better, and you know, everybody seems to get healthy when West Texas shows up on the schedule. So uh, they're extremely talented. They've got an outstanding defense. Their front, their defensive front might be the best we've seen in a while. Uh, you know, but you know, they put their pants on one leg at a time just like we do, and they got to come here and play. So uh, strap it up and go. You know, three of your last four at home, do you think that kind of gives you guys an advantage? I think it does. When you look at the uh, atmosphere we had at the last game, uh, and I think it just builds momentum. Hopefully the city of Canyon and Amarillo will come out again in full force. And, uh, if we can get uh, if we can get the same type of crowd and atmosphere we had uh, here for the Angelo State game, uh, I think it's it, it adds something to it. I'm not going to say it. I mean, we still got to play the game on the field, but it's definitely different. It gets another other team says, and that crowd gets in a frenzy. I mean, we build off of it. You just the momentum just keeps going. And when they're having fun, our players start having fun. So, uh, I mean, it, like I said, it, it's there. But you know, I'm just worried about what our teams worried about in commerce this week. Tailgates start with the best beef, and the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shim and Dylan for your appointment today. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physicians Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. 
Texas A&M Commerce comes into today's game with a record of four and three overall. Most recently, they throttled Western New Mexico 58-0 last week in Commerce to celebrate homecoming. That game saw the Lions offense amass 520 yards in total offense. The Lions are coached by David Bailiff. He is an experienced coach. He spent 17 years as either a head coach in the high school ranks or an assistant in the collegiate ranks, including stops at Southwest Texas State and TCU, where he served one year as the defensive coordinator. He then spent three years as the head coach at Texas State before moving to Rice, where he was the head coach for 11 years. Rice, a very difficult place to win, but Bailiff did. In fact, he took the Owls to their first bowl game in 47 years and guided them to two bowl games during his 11-year tenure. He's now in his second year at A&M Commerce, his third actually, but the Lions didn't play last year due to COVID-19. Very defensive-minded. His Lions team this year leads the Lone Star Conference in sacks, total defense, and passing defense. Last week against Western New Mexico, the Lions had 10 sacks in the first half alone. But it's not all defense. The Lions can move the ball, too. They're quarterbacked by Miklos Smalls. He's missed the majority of the season due to injury. Tonight will be his third game this season. All starts for the year. He is 30 of 46, passing for 417 yards. Very efficient. Last week, 8 of 10 through the air for 224 yards. That's an average of 28 yards per complete. So the Lions will stop you on defense and then throw the ball on you on offense. Buffaloes are going to have their hands full. Game time conditions, it's beautiful here in Buffalo Stadium. I've said that every game this year, and it holds true for tonight as well. Temperature 85 at game time. It'll drop into the mid-70s by the second half. Wind out of the southwest at 20, gusting to 30. So that could mess around with the kicking game a little bit, but it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to take a timeout out when we come back. Lucas and Bryce will have our keys to tonight's game as well as setting the starting lineup. You're watching Buffalo Football on Thunder Vision and the LSC Digital Network. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. Welcome to Metadrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our HealthMart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. We are Carpet Tech, and we are family. 
More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? J. Ferg Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guide you every step of the way. That is the J. Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call J. Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are J. Ferg Roofing. We are more. Bud Light, proudly brewed in the heart of Texas. Jamie Abbott and Bryce, uh, we're excited for this one. You know, the Buffaloes, we've already talked about it, winning back-to-back -back games, kind of getting themselves back in a conversation. Yes. When I visited with Hunter Huser this week, I said, Coach, you're in the mix now for uh, LSC championship. And he kind of stopped me and said, it's just one game at a time. And I think that's because he knows this is probably the toughest opponent they've seen all season long. Well, it definitely is. And it's one, even though they played the number you know, five team in the country a little while ago with Colorado School of Mines, they know what to expect from Commerce. They have seen them so much, and they know what kind of style they're going to throw at WT tonight. So it's, they know it's going to be physical. They know their defense is a senior-laden defense. And so that can you break that nut? Can you yeah. get around what they can do defensively, keep your offense out in the field? I mean, that's the thing that they got to do. And it is one game at a time. Don't worry about next week. Let's worry about today. Well, let's take a look at some of the highlights here from Texas A&M Commerce with the Lions. That's some of the things they do offensively and also defensively as we look at what they did last week against Western New Mexico. Miklo Smalls, the quarterback, we remember him, Bryce, yes. from two years ago. He was an all-LSC performer, and he was actually this year's preseason player of the year. But he's been out. He got a knee injury back right. in the spring. He brings confidence back to this team. And then here's a look at a guy that you don't want to kick the ball to, Dominic Ramsey. Yeah, he really, as you can see, he has incredible moves. And then kind of like some players we've seen too in the past, once they find that, get in the open, they find that extra gear and you can't catch him. Right? So that's tough. Yeah, he's a two-time All-American as a return man. Miko Smalls finding one of his receivers there. You're going to see some big, fast receivers. And you're also going to see a wealth, a host of running backs that they'll throw out as well. You know, and the thing about it, I mean, I think DWT has to approach this one. Yes, it is a conference game, but yet you're also playing, in essence, a Division One opponent because yep. they're going to that next year. For Commerce, uh, talk about Smalls and, and what he can do passing the football. They have a big, experienced offensive lineup there as well. Christian Hernandez, a, sen a senior center that has started for the last three seasons. And Eamon Simon, who's a uh, left tackle for them as well. He's a guy that you're, you have to contend with as he is 6'5", 290 pounds. And uh, they they do a good job, obviously, what they want to do offensively. They want to run the football. You look at their offensive stats this year, 176 on the ground. That's 51st in the country. A little behind in the passing. But, again, they went the first, uh, let's see, the first five games of the season without the guy that they really wanted to, to be back there running the show. Right. Miko's only been back for this is his third game. So he's only played two other games before this. And so they kind of are just now getting in step a little bit offensively because they have him back at quarterback. And so that may bring and should bring a different dimension for what they want to do offensively and what they've been working on through much of the year offensively. And again, I think the thing that's, that's huge with them is their defense. You know, <laughs> we have seen them in games past where they have manhandled not just WT, but other teams as well, sure. just by the athletes that they bring in. And so, again, that'll be a good challenge for last, West Texas. Last week against, against Western New Mexico, 10 sacks. Those yes. all came in the first yes. half. They, they're going to throw in a lot of defensive linemen, rotate those guys, keep them fresh. But the secondary is what is the biggest strength for Commerce. They're big, they're physical, and they're fast. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think their speed is what is deceptive because they are big and physical. They will kind of man you up a little bit and, you know, try to get you off rhythm, off your route. 
but the thing is, they can stay with you step for step. All right, let's look at the WT keys to victory for this game, Bryson. Number one, we've already talked a lot about Miklo Smalls. How are the Buffaloes going to contain this quarterback who we remember, you know, in 2019, WT playing a great game here uh, at Buffalo Stadium. Looked like the Buffs were going to have a chance to beat Commerce, and he just put the team on his back. Smalls did and led him to a 34-20 well, win. And that's the talent that he brings. And so what do you, you want to keep him, obviously, in the pocket. Mm -hmm. You don't want to let him get outside where he can create or manufacture some kind of offense. That, so if you can keep him in there, and then again, you don't want to open up some run, running lanes for him to take off as well. Now again, coming back from a knee injury, so he may not be as adept to run this early since he's been back, but still, that is one of the things that he can do. And so uh, keeping him contained is going to be the big thing. All right, second key we have here is keep this physical, talented commerce defense on the field, right? Right. And, and, and then how you <laughs> – it's easy, right? It's a double-edged sword, yes. Yeah, it really is because, again, senior-laden club, very explosive. They're number one in the conference for a reason, only allowing 206 yards per ball game. And so if you're keeping them on the field, that means your offense is You're converting on third drives. down. Exactly. And so you're able to move and to make things happen. And so and, and that's a big key for WT is getting the running game going tonight. Yep, and whether that's with the running backs or like with the quarterback, Nick Gerber, which yes. we saw last week in Portales. Third key I always like to throw some music in, right? Some, some 80s, some 70s music. Billy Joel, he famously sang back in 1989, we didn't start the fire, right? Yes. Well, the Buffs need to start a fire tonight, kind of similar to what we saw two weeks ago against Angelo State where it was a rock concert here. It really was, and the crowd got into it so well, and that helped kind of fuel that fire that you're talking about. And so we need that to happen. So, again, it goes back to either – you need the offense out there that can make some explosive plays or on special teams you need to make something happen. All right, we're going to take a final timeout, quick one-minute break. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the X-Bar X-Factors of the game. It's WT and Texas A&M Commerce. We've got a good one here tonight on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo, Dumas, and Dalhart, and ask us about our free Whitening for Life program. Stadium, Lucas Kinsey alongside Bryce Sheets. And we're getting closer here to the coin toss and the opening kickoff between West Texas A&M and Texas A&M Commerce. The, the final time these two teams will meet in Lone Star Conference. Bryce, our Commerce friends over uh, two booths down from us think it may not be the last time that these two teams get together, <laughs> but certainly it will be in LSC play. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first for the West Texas A&M offense. And so for WT, offensively, Bryce, we've already got up here the X-Bar Steakhouse X-Factor of the game, Nick Gerber. The quarterback, you could say, well, he could be the X-Factor every week. Sure. But why is he so important specifically tonight? Because he sets the table as far as what the offense can do. And again, last week, a good example is in that Eastern New Mexico game where the running game was being stymied. So he took it on his shoulders, and then he took off and manufactured the running action for the Buffaloes last week. And so that was huge. And, and so, again, when you're the quarterback, usually the defense is only accounting for you to throw the football. They don't expect you to run. So if you can establish that run, get them off balance a little bit, that'll be a big thing for him. And we've seen him start to develop a little bit of uh, kind of a go-to receiver. It's Noah Vigardis yes. who, who makes his start again, the junior from Eastvale, California. But they're going to need these receivers. The first thing they're going to have to do is get open off the line uh, against the what we think will see press coverage on the outside. Yeah, we do. And, again, just it's just not Bogardis that is the one that has to kind of make things happen to 
We need Markel Stevens Peppers to step up, and then Caitlin Olison has been coming on in the last few weeks as well. And so those three need to find some way to get separation tonight. The offensive line, the starters, Adam Alcorta, left tackle. He's a sophomore out of New Braunfels, Texas. Left guard, Jacoby Lott out of Amarillo, Texas, the Tascosa High School product. The center making his 15th start is Zane Madison. Where's number 52? He's a 6'3", 310-pound sophomore. Patrick Gray will start at right guard. And then the Shark. Parker Hanna, 6'5", 295-pound junior out of Stratford, will start uh, at right tackle. You'll see Brandon Blair get the start at running back. We'll also see a lot from Khalil Harris. Brandon had a bounce-back game last week against Eastern New Mexico. He had a great ball game against Eastern New Mexico, and there he is right there in your picture. And so Brandon, again, experience. He's been around a long time. And the thing is, the fun thing about him with running the football is he finds an opening. He finds a crease to kind of slither through. Not the fastest guy, but he'll make things happen in forward motion. In other words, he'll go downhill. Not that we, you and I certainly have ever been in any bar fights, <laughs> but Brandon's the type of guy, you want him on your you side. Do. You, you want do. him. You want to turn around and see Brandon Blair fighting for you. Yeah. Buff's getting ready to come out. Let's take uh, our attention uh, to the defensive starting lineups. You saw Tobias Harris there at the front as the Buffaloes make their way onto the field. And Bryce, Tobias Harris officially had his welcome back party last week in wow. Portales, New Mexico. Yeah, I mean, indeed, three interceptions in that ball game. And again, just was able to kind of sniff out where the uh, Greyhounds were trying to go with the football. And so did a good job with that. Obviously, coming up with three picks, those are huge as far as, again, that's making things happen for the defense, allowing the offense to come back out. And so that's just a huge thing for what WT's defense. And again, the last two weeks, we've seen so many great plays. And, and again, there's an example right there of the way he's been playing as of late. Yeah, and you can't make mistakes like this. This is one of the three interceptions they returned, one of the two that he took all the way back to the house for pick six return touchdowns. And so Tobias is our X-Bar Steakhouse X-Factor of the game. And then Bryce, this is from a couple seasons ago, but he is starting to get back in as the punt return guy. Yeah, and that's the thing. When he was so explosive, when he was younger, should we say that, when he was you know, new to the campus or something along that line, had that little extra step in his giddy up. And so we're starting to see that again, which is good. He's been through some injuries. And so, again, if we can get him back, to where he was that not only does it speak volumes for the defense but also speaks volumes for the team because he's a vocal leader let's look at the other defensive starters for west texas a&m up front defensively on the defensive line you'll have dylan mata at one defensive end xavier rivera the nose tackle in the middle jalen hill we'll also see him number 91 from that defensive line spot and then bryce a guy that has just been outstanding is number 96 michael smith we have so many young defensive linemen yes. michael has 22 tackles four quarterback hurries and a sack this season just a freshman and it, it, the thing that the coaches talked about coming into this season is they were excited with this freshman class and he is one of those guys, especially defensively, Coach Haddon has talked about. They like the way he has picked up the game, one, and picked up the speed of the game. And then he's kind of just built on that. And, and actually, you can see he goes out there as well um, as, you know, one of the captains for tonight's ball game. So that just speaks to the way he has played over the last several weeks. Those captains will be for West Texas a Brandon Blair, Michael Smith, Noah Begardis wearing number eight. And number 28, Satchel Escalante for Texas A&M Commerce. So go with number 51, Amon Simon. Number 20, Dominique Ramsey. Number 9, uh, that is the kicker, Jake Viquez. And number 10, Alex Schillo. So it looks like the Commerce won the toss. Commerce they have the deferred to the second, the, half. To the second half. So WT yeah. will receive here to start the ball game. And so, again, important to see the number one offense going against the number one defense. Who's going to get off to a quick start? West Texas will receive on the north end. We appreciate our game sponsor, Texas Farm Bureau, here for what we uh, hope for and expect to be just like so many times with Texas A&M Commerce and West Texas A&M, a great Lone Star Conference battle. Again, you look at the series, it's the 35th meeting. Commerce leads the all-time series 20-14, to 14, and it's interesting. Commerce has won the last six straight. Before that, it was the Buffaloes right. that won six in a row. So yeah. The last time that WT has won in this series is 2013 in Canyon. They won 62-28. to 28. And so... 
We're excited for this one. Our officials for tonight's game, referee Dal Watson, the umpire is Oscar Shorten, headlinesman Rolando Gonzalez. Field judge is James Perdue. The line judge will be Christopher Shields. Side judge is Richard Gutierrez. Back judge, Bobby Grayson. And the center judge is Sergio Luna. And so, but right as we get started here, Bryce, what, uh, especially in the first quarter where it's interesting, WT has outscored opponents this season 86 to 31 in the first quarter. What are you looking for get, from the offense here to, to start? A fast start, absolutely. We've got to be able to get off, to get out and get going up the field. So that, you know, means the offense is. They've scripted out what they want to do the first 15 plays. Usually that's what a lot of teams do. So they kind of have the script of what they want to do, and they'll make those adjustments in the first three or four plays of whether or not they can continue that script or they're going to change it. And so hopefully they can get off to a fast start. So it'll be the left-footed kicker, Jake Viquez, who's a good one. He's a senior out of Rockwall, Texas, that will take two steps and punch this ball over the head of Heston Marshall, and so no return for the Buffaloes. And we will see Nick Gerber in the offense to start the ball game tonight for West Texas A&M. Again, a 4-3 overall record, 3-1 in LSC play. Two straight wins over Angelo State and then on the road at Eastern New Mexico. And Coach Hughes, Bryce, he would have loved to win this game tonight in his uh, – it's really his fifth season, but they didn't play. Obviously, Commerce last year didn't play right. at all the, right. with COVID-19. But 0-4 uh, right. against Commerce. Yeah, and that's one of those, you know, that kind of sticks in your crawl a little bit. And so um, it's not so much with Coach Bailiff, uh, who's there now. but They've only had one meeting. They've only had one meeting. And so there's not that rivalry between the coaches there. But it is what has taken place in the past. And, of course, you've got a national championship team from a couple of years ago that you would like to see you know, on the sideline. Well, we got movement on the very first play before they can get the ball snapped. Jeremy Carnbay moves early, and that's, you know, you're watching Commerce. They walk up Dominic Ramsey, who's the All-American return man. He's also that hybrid, that safety slash linebacker spot. He walks up, and he'll do it again on the line of scrimmage. They're going to blitz him a lot. Yeah, and he moved, and so that's why Carnbay moved too. But he didn't move across the line, and so that's where the penalty came. So it's first and 15. They give it to Blair. Big hole opens up for Brandon Blair. Ramsey is able to make the tackle, but not before Blair gains yardage to the 30-yard line. So that's a nice 10-yard run on first down. And what a job by that offensive line on the first play. Yeah, it really was. And again, he got to the outside. And so that's where they're probably going to see more of the running room is going to the sidelines than rather up the middle. They're going to bring Carn Bay in motion. Gerber's going to keep it. He's at the 35 and then steps out of bounds at the 36-yard line about a yard and a half after picking up the first he down. He knew where he needed to get to, so that's where he went. He got to the first down. That keeps the drive alive. And, again, it keeps the offense out there, keeps their defense out there. And so that's one of the keys we had talked about in this ballgame. So a good start for the Buffaloes after they picked up the false start. Nice back-to-back -back run plays from Brandon Blair. And then the quarterback, Nick Gerber. Commerce with a four-man defensive front here. And it's Caleb Olison that takes it on a receiver reverse, slides through two defenders, and has a nice run. He's close to another first down, gain of nine. As uh, you mentioned, Olison, it's one of the few times we've seen him run the football right. this Again, season. On an end of round, he came from the near side to the far side as he got it. He looked for an opening, saw a slot right at the hash mark, tried to slide up, which he did, and then was able to pick up nine on the carry. And we see some tempo, and now the offense turns, and they'll maybe change the play. <clears throat> Again, pay attention to the corners yeah. in the matchups on the outside. They are going to play tight. You see number seven at the bottom of your screen it's man there. To man. And so, again, if you can get a step, but it's hard to get that step. It's D'Angelo Ellis in coverage, but they're going to run it. WT is. They just needed a yard, and I don't know if they got it. Blair tried the middle and the middle was plugged yeah, up. Where are the officials at? They did not get it. And so he's going to be short about a half a yard. One of the defenders in there was number Time zero, D. Walker. Play. He's a 6'2", 240-pound senior, originally out of the state of Georgia, a transfer from Arkansas. They're coming out to check on one of the injured players, Ben Hutch. But, uh, Bryce, let's talk about this. Commerce, one of, the, one of the stats that we wrote down, 31 transfers yes. on the roster this season. 11 of those are from Power 5 schools. Well, that goes back to the transfer portal. And so what uh, 
you know, head coach Bailiff did was basically look at who was available with a, kind of a Division One pedigree and would they be open to coming to, com- to Commerce with the idea of that possibility of them going D1. And so, again, they look at it that for the transition year, they can come get in the system and get comfortable with it. Now, with those 31, a lot of those are seniors 31. and so won't be around when they do make the change next year. So it's going to be about a half yard short. They did help cross, or Hutch, excuse me, to the sideline. He was hurt on the last play, actually, and then kind of su- uh, suffered through it and then went down. And Jordan Johnson's under center at quarterback, and Jordan just takes the pile forward and takes it for not only a first down, he takes it for five yards to the 50-yard line. And the thing is, he's one of those seniors that leads by example from the standpoint that it's what he does on the field that kind of fires everybody up. And that's just a great example. They needed half a yard, and they got three and a half. So right now, early in the game, WT doing a good job offensively, moving the football. Drive started from the 25-yard line, and then they backed up. uh, False start penalty. But right now they've made it to midfield. Ball on the left hash, first down. Ball's on the turf, and it's fumbled, and it's going to be Commerce that recovers it. Quarterback exchange to Johnson, and the ball was dropped, recovered for Commerce by number 10, Alex Schillow. This wasn't a clean handoff that time as he was trying to get it to Jordan Johnson, and he kind of bobbled it a little bit. It wasn't just clean. That's the thing. you got to get it in there. you got to put it in the bread basket and let him have it and take off, and so that's where that miscue came about. Again, kind of hurts on a promising drive. You have a miscue, and that this is one of those teams you don't want to have those kind of issues. So Texas A&M Commerce did not need any favors from West Texas A&M, and they got one early in the game. Ball just on the other side of the 50 for the Lions. And Miklo Smalls Man, has, yeah, he has until Halloween to get rid of that ball. It's caught, and it's going to be a first down. Catching it is number 88 that time. And that is Matt Childers, one of the big receivers. He's 6'4". Oh, he Bryce, you could have completed that I think one. so. He had all kinds of time to find him, and he did. And then when he was trying to zero in on him, Ibrahim Canate comes up and tries to swipe the ball away instead of trying to make the tackle. That allowed him to have those yards after the catch. So this Commerce offensive line on the first offensive play from scrimmage for the Lions is a wall. Gives Smalls all kinds of time on first running play of the game. It's a good carry for Antonio Lagley AA. And Chris Thomas makes a nice tackle after a gain of three yards there for the running back. And Lagley AA, Bryce, is one of four running backs that we will see. He has 30, he has 51 carries this year. Carandel Hale has 43 carries. E.J. Thompson has 55. J.T. Smith only has 24, but he's the fastest guy on the field. So it's runner back by committee is what they want to do. Second down and seven. Smalls, again, good protection. Throws it, caught. Nice catch away from his body on the catch. The tight end, Drew Karstens. They don't go to the tight ends very often. That time it was a good snag, though. Gain up to the 20. Well, he only had the tight end available in his sights. He had pressure coming from behind, and so he had to get rid of it. Still had time. Still had a nice job by the offensive line. They would given him a nice pocket to kind of work in. But, again, he, he felt somebody coming, so he had to get rid of it. Saw the tight end was able to get it up the field. Off crowd making noise here on third down and four. With Commerce on the move, they hand it to the receiver in motion, and there's some speed, and that's going to be a first down up across the 15 to the 13-yard line. They hand it to J.T. Smith. Yeah, and, and again, that's the thing. He's coming on an end around and with great speed, exactly. kind of similar to what J. WT J. did with Olsen, so the same thing as he's able to turn upfield, got just what he needed for the first down. J.T. Smith, a senior from Klein, Texas, transferred a couple seasons ago from Tyler Junior College. Last season, he was a member of the National Championship Sprint Relay team for Texas A&M Commerce. Lately, A.A. takes the carry. Buffs missed the tackle or, uh, initially, and then they clean it up at the end of the play. Well, that was one J.T. Cavender wishes he could probably take back. He had a direct line to go up and grab the running back and, and just kind of misfire when swiping at his feet, couldn't get him down. And so no gain on the play, but he could have threw him for about a three or four yard loss. So second down and 10. 
And another new running back in is Carandall Hale. They fake it to him, roll the quarterback to the left, and the throw's incomplete, and the buffs. I was waiting to see if yeah. they were going to throw a penalty. That's, that's a Satchel Escalante came across and made a hit on the receiver, and I'm surprised, honestly, Bryce, that they did not throw a flag because of the, the football we see nowadays. Yes. Here. Well, and yeah, especially this year, you know, that's kind of a, a point of emphasis for officials is that an unprotected receiver or whatever it may be, that if they get hit or they can't defend themselves, they're going to throw a flag. Third down play again. Smalls right across the middle. This time he finds his man, and it's fumbled, fumbled into the end zone. The Buffaloes recover it, but the down. side judge is going to say the receiver was down at the one-yard line. It was very close to a touchdown, and then the ball pops free at the end of the play, now, and now, Commerce is just going. Smalls is stopped. Great tackle well, by JT, or excuse me, uh, Gage Smith. And how many players were out there for both teams? And now the official is going to come in and talk about it because the buffs were showing in people. And so, so too did, or I should say, Commerce did not show anybody in. Offsides on the substituting players. Penalty of force, half distance and goal. We play first down. Oof. And so the buffs were trying to shuttle in players. And usually the umpire comes up and gives them that to allow that to take place. And they're talking about it with the other official out there and that time they did not allow that to take place and so so it's first and goal for the lions yeah, at the one yeah actually it's really first and goal at the one foot line so buffs get a late sub in it's xavier rivera smalls out of the gun hands it to hale and he tries to plunge forward the ball came out again it's still loose and i think the buffaloes may have recovered it yeah, this time pointing, for real yeah, they're pointing that way Nice job by WT as the ball came free as they try to go again a power off the right side. It was Taylor Hickerson that with the fumble recovery, Bryce. And this is interesting if we get a replay. The ball is just sitting there. It's like no one for, realized well, it was for a loose. Second, yeah, and it's back at the five yard line. And so again, as we look here, you see um, the ball is well. There's the recovery right there. But basically, they're trying to do a dive off the right side, and then the ball got knocked free. Again, nice job by the Buffaloes being able to pull that in. You can see right there the ball pops out, and then it's just spinning, as you said. And so great opportunity or great defensive stop for the Buffaloes. And, and the Commerce Lions, you've got to be thinking, we, we were close to scoring yeah. twice. Yes. No score. 9.03 to play first quarter. WT second offensive possession. Blair stopped initially at the line of scrimmage. He's going to. Not get be able back. to gain anything. Yeah, he's going to get back to the line. Right. And again, they are kind of slotting some linebackers up in some holes, and so they uh, see they have an opportunity to kind of gum up the offensive line a little bit, and so they've been able to do that on the last two runs for WT. And Bryce, as much as we love our guy Brandon Blair, I'm looking down on the sideline, and Khalil Harris is in street clothes. Blair takes the carry, and... Gains yardage up to the eight-yard line. So that uh, your best running back, a guy that is in the top 40 in the country in rushing yards, nearly 600 rushing yards, five touchdowns, Khalil Harris, they're not going to have his services tonight. Well, and that gives Blair and also Jared Compton an opportunity with his, his absence to kind of step up and see what they can do. Here's a third down and seven for WT from its own eight-yard line. Commerce bringing some pressure, it looks like, up the middle. They do. They pressure with the linebackers. Gerber in trouble and has to heave this one out of bounds. There's not a receiver anywhere anywhere near, not even in the same zip code. But they're going to say he got out of the tackle box because I don't see a penalty No, marker. there's not, and he, he did kind of slide to his right that time, and so it got away from the pressure, and they're talking about it. I think that's what they're talking about. But um, he slid to his right. And so a long conversation by the referee. Let's see if they do drop a flag. Oh, they are. They're saying it's a safety. Now they're going to have to have, have an explanation if it's. The result of the play is a safety. The quarterback was not outside the pocket when he threw the ball. There was no eligible receiver in the area. We knew there was no receiver, and so that was one. Where so similar to a holding, if you have a holding yes. in the end zone, if the yes. quarterback has the intentional yeah. grounding well, in the end zone, exactly. it's a safety. If it's a penalty in the end zone, it's Yikes. a safety. And, so, and that basically is what happened. Is he didn't roll completely out in front of the tackle box, 
and try to throw it away. Now Hunter's going to com going to complain about that because he's going to say he rolled out, but. As we, you know, take a look at it too, he did not have anybody nearby. You look and, and oh no, you know there was no one there. Kent Johnson was the closest one <laughs> uh, down there, unfortunately. So uh, the Buffaloes off to a, a, a rough start, I guess. You try to find the silver lining, Bryce, and here's the silver lining. It's just two nothing instead of it being yeah, no, seven it, or nine. It really is, and again, they they could have scored. And when I, we look at the replay on the big board again. And then I know Hunter's upset because he didn't. He says that he rolled out beyond the tackle box, but he really didn't. He kind of just stepped back and kind of went at an angle, and then he threw it away with it where there was no receiver. Had there been a receiver, then that would have probably changed that call. So right now it's two nothing. Got a baseball score, I guess, <laughs> with uh, the baseball playoffs going on and uh, the Houston Astros moving on again to the World, uh, the World Series. Series. Who, <laughs> yeah, and we have some people, I think, that are excited about that, a few Astros fans. Now, the other side looked like the Braves were going to take it, and the Dodgers are coming back. I think that series is 3-2. 3-2, and again, going tonight, uh, they uh, were going to go with Max Scherzer, but he's he's got a dead arm, so he's not pitching tonight. And so, You think those Astros fans want the Dodgers or no? I, I think so. I think so. I think they really do. They want to show that they can do it, you know, whatever. So it's going to be a punting situation for the Buffaloes. All right, Coash will kick it back to Commerce from his own 20-yard line, and it's a good kick, but unfortunately Ramsey gets his hands on it at the 40 and then tries to weave up near midfield. The Buffs are trying to rip that football away. Commerce is going to have excellent field position again. Well, the thing is, they, they're basically at about in the same place where they got the fumble recovery the last time on the when WT had it, and they fumbled the football at midfield. And so the buffs bent, but they didn't break, and they came away with a turnover again. It's a 2 to nothing ball game. We've seen two fumbles so far in the contest as well. And so nobody's really been able to take advantage of too much here in the early going. They give it to the running back, Laley A.A., and he gets maybe one yard. Good pursuit from the Buffs. Xavier Rivera is going to be credited with the tackle. Eric Collins helped out as well, but big X-man in the middle there, doing a good job it, from the nose tackle. And the nice thing that's, that's kind of interesting about Xavier, too, is that I don't want to say it's a slimmed-down yeah, version, but, I mean, he looks like he's a little quicker right now. As the season's progressed, you know, he feels it seems like he's getting quicker to the spot. I think he would take that compliment, Bryce, <laughs> Xavier. Here's a, another running play. This time it opens up for Laley AA, and he's able to get good yardage across the 45 to the 44. Gage Smith comes up from the safety spot and makes the tackle. Two receivers out on that side came back with some cutback blocks. That allowed for an open running lane, and the running back able to get it to the outside before the Buffs are able to make that stop. Bring the that right side of the offensive line features right guard Solomon Nduque, who is 6'3", 320 pounds. He's one of the bigger ones, and, and again, this is actually a smaller offensive line than they usually run. Third down short for the Lions. Smalls, quick throw, wide open receiver, first down. Buffs corral the receiver on the edge, but Childers well, he got a has great a first spot down. Because that, he was maybe at the 40, right at the first down marker, maybe the 40, and they mark it down at the 39-yard line. And, so. that, and that was actually 80 Andrew uh, Armstrong, 6'4", 180. They've got several receivers who are all 6'4". Yeah. And so he was the one that made the catch that time. You know, and that's with the Carpool error, too, at Commerce's. They brought in a lot of big receivers. The running back is Carandall Hale. And he runs hard into one of the Buff linebackers for a gain yeah. of three yards. JT Clevenger able to come up that time and make the stop for a couple, or giving three yards on the carry, but Correct. does a nice job as he kind of threads Austin. through the yeah, offensive line yards. and is able to wrap up the feet of the running back. You see Cavender Bryce, the still listed as a freshman, obviously, in his second season, 17th in the nation in solo tackles. <laughs> He's had a good, good campaign. Receiver goes in motion for Commerce. That's Jaden Proctor. And Commerce will look to throw. They find the open receiver again. Childers makes one man miss. And then Chris Thomas makes a big hit at the end. One yard short of the first down marker. Well, Tobias came up and just kind of old late on that one. He was trying to swipe at an ankle instead of just wrapping up and taking him down. Look how quick Commerce is going to work here. The Buffs defense is not ready at all. Quarterback sneak. 
Smalls pushes forward just enough across the first down uh, marker. Helmet pops off. That was Smalls' helmet. Yeah, so he has the lead. He was trying to <laughs> get down there between the big boys and say, hey, can somebody pick up my helmet for me? Yeah. But you saw a big Christian push the center. Hernandez. Christian Hernandez had a big block. So that brings up McGeely, the backup, to come in and at least for one play. And most likely this will be a handoff. Yeah, he had he had seven games of action, uh, nearly 700 yards passing, nine touchdowns, and four interceptions. But obviously, Smalls is a game changer. They give it to Hale over the right side. Two broken tackles. Uh, I think a penalty marker's thrown. Yes, behind the run, so that could be a hold. But Hale took the football. Yeah, everybody's walking right. back, and so that is going to be the call. There, that was a big open hole on the right side, and so Holy that time. Offense number 63, 10-yard penalty from the spot. So you know that uh, Solomon, the right guard, came out that time and, and just grabbed a hold of whoever was in front of him that time and just kind of turned his shoulder pads, didn't allow him to slide and fill in the hole, and that's where that penalty came what do you make of the, the running back, the stable uh, of running backs, Bryce? Well, the, the nice thing about it, and for the most part, they're all pretty big. That's First one thing. And so they all are kind of like bowling balls that are just, you know, uh, with good speed and they can get up the field quickly. Out of the gun here. First down for Smalls. Rolls left and escapes Michael Smith. Rolls right, heaves the ball down the field and completes the pass. What a great catch. At the end of that one from Jaden Proctor, but Bryce, I'm having flashbacks, kind of nightmares already from two seasons ago because that's what Miko Smalls did well, the last time the two teams and that's played. that's one of his strengths, you know, one of his superpowers basically is that he can get away from an opposition player that's trying to come in on him. And so that time he, he looked like he was going to be dead to rights and mm -hmm. was able to slide to the right a little bit to avoid the tackle and just a missed tackle by the Buffaloes and he completes a play. And makes it second down and 11. So Commerce works with three receivers split to the left. Kennedy Snell goes in motion. They hand it off to the Speedster. And actually, that JT Smith. And what they really did was a direct snap to Smith as uh, Smalls kind of works to his left, turns his back to what's going on, and they do a direct snap. So, so we see JT Smith, and we talked about it, how fast he is. He averages nine and a half yards every time he touches the ball. Three touchdowns. Is he a running back? Is he a receiver? One of those hybrids. I mean, it's hard to say. He's a fast guy on the football field. And so with that speed, you want to take advantage of it as much as you possibly can. And that's what Coach Bailiff, his staff, has been able to do. Third down and 10. We've got under three minutes to play opening quarter. The score, Commerce leads 2-0. I guess you would say bottom of the first. Here's Small setting in the pocket. Ball's oh, tipped. got tipped. And it falls to the turf. But that's a nice job up for the Buffaloes. I think it was Eric Goodman that came through, got a hand on Small's pass. And so it falls incomplete, fourth down. They do have an excellent kicker. Here's a look at the replay, Bryce. Yeah, and again, just watch him come from behind and just tip, you know, reaches out, tips it with his hand, and is able to, you know, throw off the pass. All right, so here's Viquez. He is 11 of 14 this season on field goals. This is a 45-yard try. The hold from Matt Childers. The kick is long enough, and it is missed. He missed it. And so the score will stay 2-0. And the nice thing about it is the Buffs get the football at that spot. And so, again, they'll get good, better field position to start this drive. And so a nice job in general. All right, we're going to step aside, take a timeout, come back. WT will have the football, and they trail 2-0. 237 to play here in the first quarter. You're watching West Texas A&M and Texas A&M Commerce on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. 
When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. As the Buffs make their way out there to bring the offense to now face Commerce for the third time here in the first quarter. 2.37 left to play in the first quarter. Two to nothing in favor of Commerce. You know, Bryce, last night we did, it. We, we did a broadcast in Pampa, Texas, a high school game that was 75 to 60. And it was a football game, by and the way. And it was 11, man. It wasn't a six, man. This is two nothing. Yeah. Here we go. Two good, two good football teams that have played 34 times. Here in the 35th meeting, a little bit of a slow start, you could say, offensively, but Buffs had the football. Jared Compton tries the right side, breaks a tackle. He's not going to get away from the second defender, though, as, goodness, ushered out of bounds. That was Cedric Wilcox the third, who's a six-foot, 235-pound senior linebacker out of the state of Florida. He's a transfer from Jacksonville University. Yeah, so, again, the linebackers, what they basically do, they allow the front four to make contact, and so they're just kind of reading where Jared's trying to go with the football. They just slide down the line that time, and they're able to take him and run him to the outside. Commerce showing the speed, not just in the secondary, but from those linebacker positions as well. Gerber fakes it to Compton. Nobody's open, and Nick has to throw it out of bounds. And we've had two pass attempts by Nick Gerber and both of them have gone out of bounds and so that kid we talked about that secondary and that's the thing it's just you got to get open first you got to get open for him to at least have a target and so that's where the coaches are going to come in and design or call up some plays maybe they don't go as far don't go as deep they do some crossing routes or you know some pick plays which I guess are illegal but nevertheless it always happens so you're, so you're saying football. try everything you can everything including you can yes cheating no I'm just yeah, kidding not cheating but you know <laughs> what you can within your offense. That's right. Gerber on third down and long. Going to step up in the pocket. Still nobody's open. And so he'll run at the 30 and try to pick up as much as he can. He's going to be short of the first down by maybe three or four yards. And the Buffaloes will have to punt. And again, that's back-to-back -back plays where Gerber, he had some time there. You can't really blame that on the offensive line. Simply nobody is open. No, and so when you have a broken play like that, basically he rolls out to his left and he starts sprinting. Your receivers have to acknowledge peel back. that as well and peel back and, and throw them, you know, show them their numbers and, and give them a target that he can try to throw to. And so punt time again. Coash will come on. Aaron Coash, the punter for West Texas A&M. Back to receive, Dominic Ramsey. Commerce just allays through, blocks the punt, and WT gets on it, and, and Commerce is going to have the football at the 22-yard line. so usually, and I was wow. just about to comment on that, we usually have three men in front of the punter. Today we only had two, so I don't know if somebody didn't go out there and do what they were supposed to do, or if they changed how what the punt, punt formation was and brought another guy up to the line I at mean, that time. That one was so quick, Bryce. It almost made it look like Commerce added two extra players on that play. And, and here's the interesting stat. That is only the second block kick all season long against WT. Yeah. And so, again, they went with that different formation, which is interesting. And we'll see if we have to punt again. Maybe they'll go back with the third protector out there. And it was J.T. Smith that came in and blocked that punt. They fake it to Smith on first down. Smalls rolls to the left, throws down the field, and just couldn't get enough on that. He had an open receiver down the field. So it's his third game back, and he's got his right Slow leg pass. heavily wrapped. Yeah. And so, again, that's where he had the injury. And so you can tell he favors it a little bit. He's moving okay, but he's being very protective of what he's doing away from any contact in the game. And so, again, he probably could have waited a second and made that pass complete, but instead he threw it because he had pressure coming on him. So second down and 10 for Commerce with J.T. Smith in the backfield. They're going to throw. And Smith dropped it. 
So it'll move to third down and 10. Just took his eyes off that one. Eric Collins was, was ready to come up. Yeah, he was closing on him. That, that's called that two time. really fast guys right, coming together. Yeah, yeah but that, that shows you, too, you have a linebacker coming up on him to try to uh, break up the play. And so I don't know if Smith heard footsteps or what, but nevertheless, it was not, uh, not a good catch. So far, this is where Commerce has been very, very good. Four of five on third downs. This is a third and ten. Bottom of the screen there, number 85, Chance Cooper, their best receiver in single coverage. Smalls rolls to the right, in trouble, just throws it out of bounds. And he had three WT defenders in his face. There's a Commerce Lion player down Official on the turf. The field for an injured player. The injure, uh, injured Commerce Lion stopped the clock with 54 seconds. And let's take a quick timeout. We'll come back. It's Commerce football, probably going for another field goal here. 2 nothing lead, 54 seconds left in the quarter. And we're back after this on the LSC Digital Network. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. Welcome back. Here's the block punt that we had earlier. And again, you saw two men up in front of the punter where there's usually three. The Buffs do recover it. And so but it was fourth down. But it was fourth down. And so, again, uh, unable to get that one away. And it was J.T. Smith, number six. He's, uh, he's making an impact in it's offense and on special teams. And it is his speed that's the difference maker, obviously. And so, again, set up. Commerce with great field pos position, but let's credit the WT defense that they've stopped them. Sure. So they forced this fourth down at 10. And so, again, it looks like another field goal opportunity, about 40 yards. Good to see the injured player walk off there uh, with some help. That's number four, Jaden Proctor. So Viquez uh, tried the first field goal and missed from 44. And he's going to have a 40-yard try as they spot the ball on the 23-yard line on the right hash. Gets the left foot into this one. And this time it's good. So the field goal is through for Commerce. And they now lead 5 nothing with 47 seconds remaining in the quarter. We'll take another timeout when we come back. WT will get the ball back as the Buffs trail by 5. And you're watching West Texas A&M football on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long and put their heart into the game. This is a passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. The taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons. We live for this. Well, welcome back to Buffalo Stadium as Bryce, the, I'm still waiting for your fat head. Where's, <laughs> where's the Bryce My sheets? fat head's right here. <laughs> okay. It's pretty easy to find. It's right here. <laughs> hey, the, the uh, Buffs defense did a nice job that time. A four-play drive that went zero yards and resulted in a 40-yard field goal for Commerce. They lead it five to nothing, but really the defense has played really well here in the first quarter. They just need the offense now to try to get on track a little bit. It, the one thing we haven't seen, and they've done a nice job of keeping, you know, uh, Nick Gerber in the pocket. We haven't been able to see him get out and run with the football. Kickoff is angled and into the hands of Heston Marshall. Marshall's got good speed. 
kind of runs into a wall of lions near the 20 yard line. He'll take it to the 21. Yeah, you talk about the offense, Bryce. WT, anytime they want to get going, it'd be great. Total yards, 30. No passing yards. Gerber, 0 of 1. Rushing yards, 30. Commerce, not great. They've got, but they've got 78. They've been able to, to kind of get some uh, yardage through the air with 58 yards of passing. Which is their strength coming into this. And yeah. So Miko Smalls is getting a little more comfortable in the passing ball game. But again, if you're watching this game, look at the receivers. Look at those matchups that right now between the receivers and yeah. the, the secondary players for Commerce. The Lions winning the battle right now. Here's a fake handoff to Blair. And Gerber runs hard and picks up about five yards. It's a nice run, which Gerber can do that, Bryce. The problem is I don't know if Russ Martin wants Nick doing that 20 times a game. No, I don't think he does. They're going to let this play clock run down, and so Gerber does not want to run another play. He wants the quarter to end and, and have the win at their back. That's one of the other things, too. It's not as bad as it was at the beginning of the ball game when Ken Johnson told us it was 20-mile-per-hour wins coming out of the south, and so WT's been going into that. And so that'll be the end of the quarter. Okay, 5 nothing, Commerce with the lead as we head to second quarter. quarter. You're watching WT and Texas A&M Commerce right here on the Thunder Vision and Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Days are built on mornings. And Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings. Burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm. Yeah, all right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast. Topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Here's a look, look at Hunter Hughes there, Bryce, on the sideline. <laughs> and he's got that hand on his hip. And yeah. uh, right now, you talked about it. The defense doing a pretty good job. Right, Offense just not producing. They've got a second down and about four out. here coming up. Please but it's been Nick Gerber. That really has uh, has been the guy that has been able to do it on the ground. Still no passing yards for WT. No, that's the thing, and that's why Nick wanted to wait out the quarter as he has the wind in his back now. So let's see if that makes a difference for him as far as he's concerned. Again, this Commerce defense, they only give up 15 points per game. Seventh in the nation in pass defense, 12th in the nation in rush defense. Jordan Johnson's a tight end. They bring him across and as a blocker. The give is to Blair. And he gains a couple. Again, big story for WT tonight, no Khalil Harris. Right. And that's a guy that has nearly 600 rushing yards on the season. And so you've got, basically that's what you have for WT. You've got running back by committee now. Well, the only one, the slack. yeah, the only one we've seen so far has been Blair. Well, Jared was out there and on Compton. a couple plays, yeah. And Jared Compton, you're right. Two receivers to the far side on third down and two. They fake it to Blair. Gerber trying to make some moves, and he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Pounded hard at the end of that run by number 10, Alex Shello, the safety. And yeah, it's just, punt, punt time again. Yeah, just can't get anything going, and let's see if they change their strategy on the punt setup because, again, Commerce came in and blocked that easily last time. So Coash 1 has to get rid of it quicker. Now, once he gets rid once he gets the football, he has to he has to pooch it right away. And again, it's a different setup than what we've seen this year for the Buffaloes on punt formations. So Dominic Ramsey, an All American return specialist, stands on his own thirty five yard line. They angle Coash to the right, low end over and kick that bounces and continues to roll. This is a great punt. It's gonna roll inside the ten, inside the five. Waving the ball, fanning the ball all the way down nearly to the one-yard line was Ayrton Payne. And so Aaron Koash with, for the Buffaloes, what has been the play of the game so far yeah. on a monster punt. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he did a nice job. So what he does, he rolls to the right a little bit, get back, get away from 
the, the pressure that's coming. And so the way that the punt was set up, they had most of everybody set up to the near side of the field or the right side. And, and so he was able to roll to the left side. How about 71 uh, yards on that punt? Yeah, that was fantastic. Nice job by Aaron. Yeah, this, it has the feel here, Bryce. We've been in a few of these. You go back three years ago with, with Hunter Hughes and his first couple seasons where the defense kind of had to win some games and had to make some plays. Smalls just pushes forward here on a quarterback sneak and gains one yard. But it has the feel where you could use a, a turnover. You could use a Tobias Harris interception or a fumble, something here to ignite the crowd and that's the one th that's the thing you're missing you're just missing that little spark right now especially for the offense again defense has been playing great and so you need something to spark the offense and the crowd to really get him in the ball game second down and eight second quarter action lions leading five nothing and they work here on second down and long with three receivers to the near side. Smalls wants to go the opposite end, though. The pass is thrown low. I thought that hit the turf, but the receiver came back and made a fantastic catch. That's, well, that's a first down commerce. That's where the receiver helped out his quarterback. Wow. He came back that time that and curled Andrew back. Armstrong. Andrew Armstrong. Andrew Armstrong, yeah. He did a nice job because he was beyond where, you know, they were trying to throw the football. He looks back and sees his underthrown, so he comes back, scoops his arms underneath, and is able to make the catch on the far sideline. Big play for the Lions. Yeah, got him out of the shadows of the goalpost, and so it gives him a new first, first down set of markers. Randall Hale, the running back. And he takes the ball over the left side. Broken tackles. Stays on his feet. Strong running from Hale. He is 5'11", 190 pounds, a senior from Greenville, Texas. It's the other thing with these running backs, Bryce. Three of the four running backs, they're seniors. So yeah. they're experienced. No, and, their bodies are in shape. That's the thing. This is a senior late club. And again, we're talking about a team that did not play last year. And so nobody got nicked up, nobody got banged up. I mean, the quarterback did, obviously, but that was in spring football. Mm -hmm. And so um, so really they, they stayed pretty healthy. Throw to the outside, caught, and then good job on the tackle. Coming up was Ibrahim, or actually, that's Michael Anozi. Yeah, Anozi did a nice yeah, job. He read it perfectly, broke on the ball, broke on the receiver as he saw the ball being released. And so he throws that back. And uh, keeps it keeps them from getting the first down. That was Armstrong on the catch, his fourth catch already. Third down and three. A lot of different options here for the Commerce Lions. Their offensive coordinator in his third season, Billy Reebok. Play clock already down to seven seconds. Smalls is going to have to hurry here. And he just gets it off. It's got man coverage, and so they and go to the tight end that is not picked up. And so they were able to get it across where it needed to be. Again, he dropped the football. Official says it's he was down by contact. Ground can't cause the fumble. Second catch time for Drew Karstens. And that's what, you know, Commerce is so good at. Third and third and three, they just kind of cool, calm, collected. Convert the first Well, down. the other thing they've done for years, too, and again, David Bailiff is continuing it, they find these big tight ends. Mm -hmm. They don't, like you said, they don't utilize them a lot, but they do in key situations. And again, nobody was paying attention to the tight end. So another first down pickup here on this drive that started on their own one-yard line. Pass to Hale, and Anoza comes up again. A Michael Anoza, the safety. Another big tackle, this one, for a loss of two on the play. Yeah, nice read that time because he saw the man coming up to block him. And so right there, he steps to the inside and then is able to make the tackle. Just a nice job of getting around the block to begin with and then making the tackle in the open field. So a loss of two will make it second down and 12. Smalls tonight, 10 of 15 passing, 80 yards. Leading rusher, lately AA with 11 rushing yards. That's yeah, their passing game that has been good for them. And they're taking the time out. All right, so Commerce wants Commerce to talk things over on second down and long. Lions lead 931 we'll to play before halftime. And it's still a baseball score. Five nothing, Commerce leads. We're back after this timeout on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. 
Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures in materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shimon Dill Group for your appointment today. Welcome back to Buffalo Stadium, Jayford Field, as the Buffs trail in this one in the second quarter. Five to nothing, 931 left to play in the half. And again, it's been the Buffalo defense that has kept them in this ball game. They, tra they trail five to nothing, but they've done a nice job trying to contain Miko Smalls in particular, but just hold their offensive run game to really not much in this ball game. So far. The other side of that, the Buffalo the Buffalo offense has no passing yards in the ball game. So that's kind of what's been our Achilles so far. If we've gone back to 1984, Bryce. No passing yards. Thrown on the outside chance. Cooper, it's a screen, and he is taken down by JT Cavender after a short pickup. And the thing that's nice is our secondary Cooper. is really getting a good read on what they're trying to set Time up to offensively. Move. That's the Lions are trying to set up offensively. So they, they, they see the blocks coming, and they're able to defend them off in order to hold their position and able to turn a play either to the inside or try to get it to the outside. Well, spring in defensive lineman number 44, Samote Samate, who's a junior, a transfer from Colorado Mesa. Speaking of Mesa, they had a big upset win today. Yeah, nice win. 26-21 victory for a Colorado Mesa. It's third down and eight for the Lions. Smalls sets in the pocket. Now flushed out, flips it forward to Hale, who jukes the defense out and, and has a first down across the midfield. If there's an Achilles for our defense, it's we try to make shoulder pad tackles. We don't try to wrap up anybody's legs. And so that time they just took advantage of it again. Mm. As you've ta talked about in pregame, credit Smalls making something out of nothing. Yeah, here it is. Just step up, whoop, flip that, and then Hale with a good juke move. There's a first down play that... Again, there's Michael Inozzi that comes up and makes a stop. He takes the receiver down there, Kennedy Snell, for a loss of one. Yeah, he he's from a safety position. It's kind of like you're playing center field and you're getting a good read of what the offense is trying to do. So you're trying to go to a spot and trying to make something happen. Eight minutes to play before halftime. Two receivers split to the left here for Commerce. You bring two tight ends in. But they'll pass, thrown to the far side, caught. Penalty marker flies immediately. Right now it stands a gain of about four or five yards on the outside to Andrew Armstrong. But is this coming back? Yeah, they've got a, they've got a lineman downfield. And so one of their linemen, it looked like it was big number 74, Richard West, who was way up, the, well, not way up the field, but they're calling it more this season if you, you know, go three or four yards. Field, office number 64, the five-yard penalty. Well, they said 64, Travis, that, but... So too was Richard West, and so um, both of those guys were up the field, and so officials throw the flag on that one and bring it back. Second and 16. Interesting formation here for Commerce. They bring out all the receivers stacked in tight, and they just run it to J.T. Smith, who gets around the edge and nearly had the seam down the sideline. Tobias Harris and Taylor Hickerson able to shove him out of bounds, but he just needs a crease. Yeah, not much. And again, we did a nice job of adjusting over to the near side where he tried to run the football and then just pushed him out of bounds. Third down again for Commerce. As you look at third downs, six of eight. 
for the Lions. The Buffs just one for four. Notice that Caleb Ariola is warming up on the WT side. Backup quarterback. On third and long, Smalls throws across the middle, incomplete. Good coverage from Tobias Harris. And maybe miscommunication because the receiver was running really across the field yeah. and the ball was thrown like down the middle. He was going on an up and in that time and came across and it, it looked like Smalls was expecting him to do more of a more of an up and kind of a post pattern, go up toward the goal line or toward the goal post, and he didn't. And so a uh, putting opportunity here for the Lions. Well, you mentioned... Ariola warming up. I still see Gerber down there over by Russ Martin. WT offense is going to get the ball back. This is a high punt that's dangerous because that's where it could have touched one of the WT players. It's on the turf. And if it did touch a WT player, Commerce just recovered it, and they did. What a unfortunate mistake there by West Texas A&M. That's one where as that ball is sailing high in the air, Bryce, you've got to be communicating. Get away. Here's the replay. Look well, at this. And that's the thing. And nobody got away from it. Yeah, he's calling it for a fair catch. And it touches and it, one of the WT wow, that's players. That's what it is. And that's, I was wondering why Tobias was so upset because I thought, you know, sometimes he does wow. try to make something out of nothing, but that time he was calling a fair catch and was telling everybody to get out of the way. And it didn't happen. And, and you know those plays, most times you're blocking for Tobias. You're right. thinking, I want to get this block. Right. But as soon as whatever the signal is, whether it's fire. You just got to peel off. You really do. You got to let you And know, find let that ball, ball and right. get away. Right. So Commerce takes over from the WT 18-yard line on first down. They hand it to Smith on a reverse. Oh, whistle's blown. It was actually, oh, Commerce called a timeout. Time so that looked like a good play design to Kennedy out. Snell on a reverse. <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Timeout time out taken time by out. Texas A&M Commerce, 6.45 to play before halftime. We'll be back right after this here on the LSC Digital Network. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physician Surgical Hospital, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. Welcome back to Buffalo Stadium as it will be first and 10 for the Commerce Lions as they actually had centered the ball and then got a timeout from their head coach, and so they'll regroup. It, it's we keep saying this, Bryce, and, and it is WT defense is holding Commerce right. obviously five points. Right. They have only thirty-one un, unofficially thirty-one rushing yards, but they have one hundred thirty-three yards. WT only has thirty-eight, and so the offense is stagnant for the Buffaloes. And then when you have a couple of miscues, we've had two here in the first half blocked punt and then also the punt return that was fumbled or touched and fumbled and there's a pick Tobias Harris just intercepted the pass and there's the play that we have needed to as we said in pregame somebody start to fire well that's it and again Tobias feels like he has to make up for that miscue on the punt and so he comes up and he reads the quarterback small, sees where he's going with the football, times his jump perfectly, and then gets her, as you can see on the replays, he timed it perfectly and came in and picked up the interception. And so not great field position, but we stopped them from scoring. So the Buffs will take over at the eight yard line. So there is the play. There is the play that we've needed. You would, you would love for Tobias have been able to stay in bounds, but regardless, WT gets the football right back for the offense and Gerber Works quickly on first down. Throw to the outside. Complete, oh. incomplete. Bogardis had it, and then he didn't. He had it. He tried to turn upfield, and then he lost the handle. And as he's falling out of bounds, he's able to find it. But then it's incomplete because he's out of bounds. And so, again, it's just been kind of those little things tonight that has caused some issues for the Buffaloes. And, and again, against a very good opponent, 
You want to take advantage when you can, and so far the Buffs are unable to do so. Second down and 10. Still looking for the first pass completion. Gerber runs to the left, shoved out of bounds hard, runs into one of the photographers out uh, on the sideline after a pickup of three. And that's that's been the, the unfortunate thing for this offense, Bryce. The most positive plays have really been Gerber running, running for his life. Football. And that's the thing. He had a great game last week running with the football. And so... Commerce has not really truly watched the film on that, so they made some adjustments to try to keep him from getting to the outside or getting a running game going. Third down and six. Screen pass. They throw it to Blair. Blockers in front, and Brandon tries to stay in bounds. I think, let's see with the spot, I think he's one yard short of a first down. <laughs> and this is a tough spot because you're, you're right here in this ball game. There's probably no way that you would go for it on fourth and one because you're from your own 17-yard yeah, line. Not in this end of the field. And so the other thing, too, is Brandon on that particular play, he, looks, he goes to the outside when he had an open lane to the inside. And so may have picked up the first down, but just, you know, decided to go to the left instead of the right. So Tobias gets the big interception and the offense will go three and out. They'll punt it back to Commerce. Coash with a good kick that Ramsey will field over his shoulder and he quickly moves across midfield and is slung down across the 45 at the 44 yard line. So that's where Texas A&M Commerce will take over after this media timeout. We have 529 to play here in the first half, and the score 5-0, Texas A&M Commerce. We're back with more football after these messages. Time out on the field. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. Well, great field position for the Commerce Lions again in WT territory as they have it at the WT 44-yard line following that last punt from Aaron Coash. And so, again, the Buffaloes just struggling to move the ball with the offense. And, and they've done some things a little differently. That was a nice screen pass that they threw out to Brandon Blair, but he just could not convert on that one. And, and as we saw on the opening drive, the Buffs were really – Seem full of confidence until they fumbled the football, and then ever since then, yeah. the offense has just not been on track. Well, that's clear from the stats that show 47 yeah. total yards of offense for West Texas A&M, 133 for the Lions. So, again, for WT, you're still playing outstanding defense, trailing 5 nothing. Carandel Hale up at the 40, at the 30, a flag th is thrown, so this could be coming back as Carandel Hale shows off his speed and athleticism, but it is a holding, and so this will come back. One of those were Hale was at the late handoff. Hale goes to the outside. W3 linebacker, I believe it was JT Clevenger, was trying to come to the inside, then tried to reverse and go back out. It looked like he got his jersey grabbed, they, possibly. They caught Andrew Armstrong, number 80, the receiver, oh, on okay. the hold. Okay. And so that, and that could very well be because Armstrong was on the outside that time. And so... Third penalty of the game against Texas A&M Commerce. And so what it turns it into is a first and 11. And so that was... First and 11. From where the spot was. And so it brings it back. It's really only a one-yard penalty, really. How are you going to look at it? Chris Smalls going up top, has a man. And it is just overthrown. We had pressure in the quarterback's face. It was Michael Smith that came through, and Smalls a little slow to get up, but he still nearly completed that pass. Yeah, he really did. Tried to get it up the field. And, again, nice defense for the Buffaloes, too. 
that time as um, Ganote was was step for step with the receiver trying to get up there and just couldn't get beyond him and catch up with the football. On the previous offensive possession for Commerce, Bryce went to bias, got his 16th interception. That now moves him. He's in second place already, but wow. he is two away from tying the all-time record for WT. Steve Haterius from 64 to 67 with 18 wow. interceptions. Wow. Smalls can't find anybody. Now he rolls to the right and nearly completes a pass. It was intended for number 88, Matt Childers. Childers was walking a tightrope on the near sideline that time. And so Smalls, with pressure on him, just had to fire away and try to get rid of the football. He had plenty of time initially. And so it's not like he's really been rushed out of the pocket, but eventually the secondary is staying with their men. And so he has to kind of roll out a little bit and that time just forced it to the near sideline. So the crowd's starting to make some noise on another key third down, third and 11, 444 to play before halftime. Somehow, still just a 5 nothing score. Small's empty backfield. Being chased and flips it forward and through the hands of Dominic Ramsey. What a creative attempt on the pass from Smalls. Well, but it's fourth down. See if he was by the Across the line of scrimmage. Here's, of here's scrimmage the replay, Bryce. And that's exactly what Hunter Hughes is saying. Is that he when he threw he, the was. Pass, he was at the he was at the line of okay. scrimmage and so if you have most of your body behind and the ball is behind that's why they're not going to throw the flag on that. So we will so, see a lion's punt. And that's easy for us because we get to see the replay. Hunter was you know actual speed. He thought he crossed the line. Richel McGarry, who's a redshirt freshman from Queensland, Australia, and he punts it over Tobias's head. And a great job from the punt team to go down there and get that ball before it could go into the end zone yeah. inside the 10-yard line. Great hustle from number 27. Darius Williams, man, he did a nice job getting down there. Tobias trying to fake him out with a fair catch. But he spotted the ball and got underneath it. And so, again, tough field position for the Buffs. You know, Bryce, even a drive, I mean, they're going to have to go a long ways, obviously, with the ball inside their own 10-yard line. But even a field goal at this point would it'd be, seem. It would it'd be, a victory, it'd be a victory. It really would. And so the Buffs, they just need to get something to get the offense on track right now. So Gerber in the gun with Jared Compton now in the game at running back. And Compton takes the carry, runs into one of the defensive linemen for a short gain. If Jared that time, it looks like he reached back, so the ball may have been jostled loose a little bit. And he did a nice job of holding on to the football for a three-yard pickup. You know, we talked about these defensive linemen. They're going to rotate them. Anthony Hayes, number 99. He's a junior with 15 tackles and five sacks this season out of Southwest Mississippi Junior College. Justice Williams, number 98. He has five sacks. And then number 90, Bryson Stewart. He was Lone Star Conference Defensive Player of the Week in the second week of the season. Here's Compton, uses his speed to try to get to the edge and is close to the first down. So it'll be a third down and short, and Bryce, this is a must. The Buffs yeah. have to convert this third down. Well, leading the way on that one was Zane Madison, the center that time. He got out quick and went, after snapping the ball, went out to his right to be the lead blocker that time. For Compton, and yeah, got a nice pickup, and we've got to convert this one on a third and two. And they bring Jordan Johnson in. He's the running back, set to the right of Nick Gerber in the gun. Johnson runs up the middle, good blocking, and Jordan has a buffs first down up to the 25-yard line. So that's great running from Jordan, but that was perfectly blocked by the Buffs' offensive line. Yeah, they opened up a hole on the right side that time between the center and the right guard, and Jordan able to take advantage of it and pick up the first down. And again, love to see that guy going north and south. And it continues to keep the clock running. And that first down, I mean, just... It's huge. I mean, it's huge. It's only our third one of the ball game. Commerce brings the house on a blitz. They hand it to Olison, who tries to get around the edge and is ripped down. A great defensive play. Showing off some strength was Clifford Thunderberg. Well, you could hear below us, I mean, which is a little ways below us is the crowd, but you could hear a guy yell horse collar because he thought the way he turned, it looked like he got his, and, it, and you look at the, it looked like he did get grabbed and pulled down. Right around his right around his neck area. Buffs work quickly on second down along. Gerber 
going for Bogardis, and he overshoots the intended receiver. Some contact there, but not anything that's going to warrant a flag, well, unfortunately, for WT. That was pr primarily the reason why they didn't pull a flag. There was contact. Bogardis sold it very well. But again, it was way over his head, and that's why the official didn't throw the flag. Alex Schillow, the junior from Pflugerville, in coverage. Perhaps a former teammate of Tobias Harris. Certainly probably knows him, but <laughs> Schillow is a great uh, student. He's an academic All-American for Texas A&M Commerce. He and two other teammates were on uh, a team that won the national championship. Well, the Good Works team. Yep. Gerber throws low, but the catch is made. Great catch from Caleb Olison sliding at the 39-yard line for a Buffalo first down. And that's kind of some of the plays the Buffs are going to have to do as we watch the replay here. Again, Olison fakes like he's going to the inside, then turns, goes to the outside, and then just catches that at his ankles and pulls that one in for a nice reception. Oh, Gerber had the ball right where it needed to be in the hands of Olison, and it went through for an incomplete pass. That stopped the clock with 2.03 to play. And the Buffs regroup here. So it sent Olsen from the left side to the right side. Second and 10. Bring Jared Johnson as a slot receiver to the left side. We'll see if the Lions bring pressure. Four defensive linemen. Right now the linebackers sitting back. As the play clock runs down to seven seconds. Again, showing man coverage, one deep safety. They will bring one linebacker, Gerber, airing it out, has a receiver down there, and again, the ball overthrown. And Olison, the intended receiver that again. That time Nick locked in on Olison and looked at him. If he had looked to the near side of the field, he had a receiver that went on it up and to the and then turns to the sideline, and he was wide open. And uh, Nick just didn't see him out of the corner of his eye. So now you get a third down and long. Obviously, we'd like to convert it, but the, the problem for WT is the last two plays have been incomplete passes, and the clock has not run. Right. So you don't God. want to give him much time. That's no, exactly right. you don't. Brandon Blair in uh, at running back. Commerce gets the defensive line through. Gerber throws on the run, pass caught. On the outside, short of the first down marker, though, great defense on the, the tackling as Markel Stevens Peppers made the catch three yards short of the first down marker. And so, now you play the game, is, is Commerce going to take a timeout? They only have one left. A minute and a half, WT is certainly going to let this play clock run down before they punt it back right. to Dominic Ramsey. Coach took a long, slow gander. He's looking back at the bench. They were shouting some instructions to him, and so... And that's basically it. Play clock down to 15. Let it run as much as it can. And again, a dangerous return man back there, Ramsey. He's taken a few back to the house this year. A 62-yard punt return for a touchdown. And this is a good punt. It's going to send Ramsey back to his own 10-yard line. But he made the first man miss. And then is tripped up by Ayrton Payne. It was uh, one of the outstanding flag football officials <laughs> here in the local uh, Canyon Youth Football League. Yes, we've got a good chance. And, and Jordan Johnson, too. And, yep. and several other WT players that are out there as well. We watch watch the kids play and watch the grandkids play. And, again, it's great to see those guys out there in the community. And so, Bryce, if you, if you came in tonight and somebody uh, had the crystal ball <laughs> and they said, Okay, you're going to... over under is yeah, five. And yeah, we still have 55 seconds left, but if yeah. WT, if, knock on wood, Buff fans, if they can hold Commerce to just five points at halftime, that's great, right? Yeah, no, absolutely it is. And so we've done, the defense has done a nice job with that. Well, Smalls, he'll try to look for some more points. He rolls to the left. Nobody's open, so he just steps out of bounds as JT Cavender chases him along with Dylan Mata. So he gets, picks up two on the scamper, and so still he's 48 seconds. So, and again, the Buffs trying to shuttle in some fresh players to keep them fresh, trying to put pressure on the quarterback. And this shows, even though it's been a little ugly, uh, you would say offensively, really for both teams, it shows you how even the conference is this season. Let's go with four down linemen. Yeah, you're absolutely right. 
because you go back to Commerce, their only loss in conference was to Midwestern State, and that was a one-point loss. This pass is complete. J.T. Smith, the speedster, hit hard at the end of a run, which, which will lead to a Commerce first down up to the 36-yard line. That's a 15-yard pickup. And so now Commerce hurries the offense up as the clock runs at 35 seconds. Miko Smalls will stop it with a spike. And so, again, a nice little pattern. That time Smalls was forced out of the pocket before this spike and had to roll a little bit and, and found Smalls and was able to get him the football. He was able to turn it upfield and pick up a nice first down. Remind the fans, Bryce, at halftime, we will have the Holiday Inn Express halftime show, and we'll have a special guest with us tonight. You'll get a chance to visit with Lady Buffs head basketball coach Josh Prock. It's basketball season it next is. week, partner. It is. We're looking forward to it. Hard to believe, but it's already here. So it's second down and 10 here for Miklo Smalls and the Lions offense. Thrown and incomplete. Tobias Harris, a little bit of nudge there at the end as the pass was well overthrown, stops the clock, and makes it third down and 10. And so when I said that a moment ago, the Buffs have gone with four down linemen. They're traditionally in the three down lineman front. And so they've gone with four linemen, tried to mix it up a little bit against this front four, for, or I should say front five for uh, Commerce, trying to make them think of something different. So going with two linebackers, Eric Collins and, and uh, J.P. Clevenger primarily, and so that's where they kind of flip-flop with some different down linemen. The running back is J.T. Smith. They give it to Smith. A huge hole up the middle, and watch out. He is into open territory there, open field, all the way into the uh, Buffalo side of the 50, down at the 36-yard line, and now they'll hurry up again. The clock runs, and uh, Miko Smalls will spike it. And that looked like he was running track, right, with the baton it, in his hand. It really did, and again, great. Uh, speed on his part as he got to the outside and then just kind of turned up field and then it became a foot race kind mm. of similar to track uh, you might say and, and so a nice job for the buffs and open field to be able to make that stop and a lot of talented weapons on this roster for commerce i've been most impressed with jt smith tonight yeah well obviously he is kind of that like I said, he's a Swiss Army knife. He's one of those guys you can use in a lot of different positions. Commerce still has one timeout left. Smalls gives it to Hale and kind of pushes him forward. Now David Bailiff will come in and take his final timeout. Eric Goodman comes up, makes a nice stop. Eric, again, he's one of those four down linemen they've used. They brought him up and to be a down lineman, and he comes in, slides in, and makes a stop. They take a timeout. Let's keep it here, Bryce. Uh, again, kind of recap where we're at. 5 nothing. Commerce with the lead as they had a safety on a play where Nick Gerber's in the end zone. He thinks he slides far enough right. outside he the box, he did. throws it did, out throws, of bounds. He throws it out of bounds. There's nobody in the area, no receiver there. So it's, officials, It results in a safety. It does. The officials got together. They had to talk about it a little bit to, just to make sure. And they, that's what they were wanting to see. One, they knew there was no receiver in the area. But did he get out of the tackle box? And then he determined he did not. And then later in the half, Jake Viquez ends up kicking a field goal after WT had a, a punt blocked. Yeah, they had a punt blocked, and they gave Commerce great field position. But again, the defense stiffens, and so they keep him on, you know, no, uh, no forward progress, no yards gained uh, on three tries, and so they have to settle for that field goal. And that's what has made it five to nothing in favor of the Lions. I want to mention a uh, congratulations going out to West Texas A&M cross country team, yes. both the men's and women's yes. teams. The men's team won the Lone Star Conference Championship today for a ninth straight time. The women finished second. So congratulations to the Lady Buffs and Buffs cross country teams and head coach Jake Krolick. They'll continue their season. Next week, third down and long here for Miklo Smalls. Good protection. He'll throw on the outside. The receiver goes up, tries to make the play, but it's broken up as Ibrahim uh, Kanate pushes the receiver out of bounds. Incomplete. So it gives them six seconds left. So a chance for another player. Are they going to punt it away or are they going to try a field goal? May try a field goal here. And while we're talking WT athletics, Bryce, another congratulations out to the uh, West Texas A&M volleyball team as they pick up wins this weekend, and a record is broken. Chandler Vogel out of Hereford becomes the all-time Lady Buff leader in digs, wow. 2,424 for Chandler Vogel. Here's a field goal try, and it's a long one. It'll be 51-yarder. And it's well off the mark yeah, here from Viquez. Yeah. 
and the clock will run to zeros. And so we'll be uh, going to the Holiday Inn Express halftime show shortly. We'll get an interview down the sideline from Kent Johnson with Hunter Hughes. And I was going to say that the officials blew the whistle. There, was there were still some time. Left. Do you feel like we were back in Pampa? I <laughs> <laughs> there was a second left, and so really, I mean, what are you going to try? You can try a Hail Mary or something like that, but they at least would have had one opportunity to try something, and the officials didn't call that one back. To explain that when we were in Pampa last night, clock, <laughs> clock operation management. Uh, to, questionable. Uh, yeah, questionable. Questionable. Our score right now, 5-0. It's not questionable if you're if you look If it's in your favor. The they want. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get Kent Johnson ready down the uh, – Buff sideline, he'll visit with Hunter Hughes and talk about this first half. Well, Hunter's going to say that he's going to be really proud of the defense. Oh, the the offense is a struggle. All right, let's go down to Kent Johnson. All right, head down to Kent. Well, we're down here on the sideline with head coach Hunter Hughes and a very strange game that's seen a lot of everything except touchdowns. It's Murphy's Law. What could go wrong it went wrong for us. I mean, we've had a blocked punt. We've, we've had a punt and hit a guy. Um, it's five nothing. We had a safety. Defense is playing their ass off. Uh, offense, we got to get something going. I mean, we got to keep the defense off the field. Um, I mean, we're bending, we're not breaking, and uh, it's. Uh, I mean, uh, we're we're if our defense doesn't play, it's it's thirty five nothing. So uh, we've come out and played well defensively. Got to get things going offensively. They get the ball first start second half, so we got to make something happen on defense. You mentioned all that, and as you say, you're only down one possession. Uh, that's what you got to look at. If, if there's one positive to our half, it's that. We'll let you get up with the team. That's Hunter Hughes, five nothing. Let's go upstairs for our halftime activities. All right, Guys, Kent. back to you. Uh, Ken, thanks very much, and I think very succinct what Hunter Hughes said. The defense wasn't playing. We would be down three or five nothing. But yeah. they've done a great job keeping containment, and it's a five to nothing game. We're going to visit with the sound of West Texas. We're going to take a timeout first. Okay. But then we'll hit the sound of West Texas marching band after this. Welcome to Metadrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our Health Mart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference.
We are Carpet Tech, and we are family. More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? J. Ferg Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition? Then we work for you, a dedicated team member who guide you every step of the way. That is the J. Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards. We have it all. Call J. Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are J. Ferg Roofing. We are more. Bud Light, proudly brewed in the heart of Texas. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo, Dumas, and Dalhart, and ask us about our free Whitening for Life program. Nothing to the Commerce Lions here at the half, and we'll go through some statistics and some other things in a little bit. But before we get to that point, joining us here on the halftime interview for Holiday Inn Express is Josh Prock, who is the head coach of West Texas A&M, the Lady Buffs. And it's, it's you kind of build, and I know you've been building up to it since you've been here, but for us as fans who like to watch, we're expecting basketball. We're not, not there, we don't think yet, but it's right around the corner. Yes, sir. It's here. It's here. It's a lot sooner than uh, normal, and yeah. uh, you know we have, we actually have these three games coming up yes. this next weekend, and uh, it's and it's you know you're starting off with a bang with who we're playing. So, young ladies have really been preparing hard, and, and we'll we'll be ready. We'll be ready by then. So, talk a little bit. Today was open for the fans to yeah. come in and and watch practice and see how things are going. Talk a little bit about that atmosphere today. Always oh, amazing. I mean, uh, Bryce, we had over 100 people there. Um, they interacted with the players. You know, at the end of practice, we brought some fans down to let them shoot against our girls and stuff. So <laughs> that was a lot of fun. But the girls, uh, you know, part of the purpose of doing it was to get fans in the stands to allow our girls to kind of get some of the nerves right. out and work some of those kinks out. And uh, and I think it worked. I mean, even some of the girls are like, Coach, I'm kind of nervous today with yeah. people being here. Yeah. So I think that kind of relaxed them a little bit and be ready to go for next week. So not at all unfamiliar with the surroundings here. Obviously, you're new to the university, but not new, obviously, the area or the Lone Star Conference coming over from eastern New Mexico. How has the reception been for you, and how's your family adjust? I know it, people forget you, you've got a family. Yeah. They've got to adjust when you make moves like that. How's everything been so far? Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've always heard from the outside looking in how amazing this community is, how accepting they are, and how much they'll, they'll, they'll love on you and care for you and it's we've seen that firsthand uh, my wife works over at Reeves Hinger the, the people over there have been amazing uh, my kids go to the junior high and over there at Reeves Hinger and it's just simply been amazing and yeah. so we've uh, we've loved it here now it's kind of a whirlwind and here we go I'll see everybody in March <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah. good to see you yeah. we'll see you then yeah talk a little bit too let's let's first talk before we get to the games coming up here this week talk a little bit about your team um, and obviously you got some returning players. You also brought some players uh, as well. Got some new players that are in. Talk about the mix and, and what you like about the club so far. I've really been impressed with how they've meshed together, right? They've done a great job of kind of accepting each other. Like you said, we have six young ladies that have come back from last year, too, that uh, the previous coaching staff that recruited, and then we brought in five of our own. Right. So, you know, a total of 13. And um, they've worked really well together. Um, they've bought into the system. And... Uh, it's going to be fun to watch them. It's going to take a little while to get it to mesh. But, you know, I, well, my message to the girls is that they, that's going to, the offense and stuff's going to happen in time. We've got to be able to guard right now, play right. defense. That's right. one thing we can not control. Right. And they've really bought into that. And I've been impressed with where they are. So talk a little bit about what fans can see when they see the Lady Buffs out on the court. What, 
what what style do you like? What do you like to run? And what's going to be different probably since you have been in the Lone Star Conference, you played against WT in the past, and so you know what they ran before. What's going to be the differences? That's a great question. I mean, everybody has their own philosophy right. and things like that. I mean, defensively, maybe a little similar. I mean, we're going to we're gonna play man. We're going to play zone. We're going to mix it up quite a bit. That's kind of my forte. I love keeping the other coach, you know, guessing, guessing, what, yeah. guessing what's coming. And then – um, offensively, I think is where they're going to see the biggest change. You know, we're going to really try to push the ball. We're going to we're giving our kids probably a little more freedom than they've had in the past. I mean, you know, they were pretty structured. You know, as they um, and they were they were highly successful with that. And you know, sure. and so sure. I mean, but we're going to give our kids a little more freedom, run some more kind of like ball screen offense, really push the ball in transition and. You know, bringing a couple of the kids with us from Eastern kind of allowed us to be able to push the ball. And so the nice thing about that, too, is the fact that you know what you already have coming over, basically, and they know your system and what you like to run. Yeah, it was really nice. You know, and, I, and I, again, I, maybe not to this level, but I, I equate bringing Zamory Roberts with me, right. who, again, in my opinion, probably biased coaching opinion, but she's <laughs> best point guard in the conference. Right. I mean, it's like right. bringing Tom Brady with you. Right. And right. then next thing you know, you bring your big post, and that's like bringing right. Rob Gronkowski for her, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's it's been great. I mean, yeah. those two have meshed well with the other girls. So Let's talk about the club a little bit real quick uh, before we get to this, the games coming up. I mean, the thing that we, we noticed a little bit, you're talking about the speed, you're talking about the setup with – with the players on the wings, too, a little bit. But you also got some good size. Yeah, we have some great size. I mean, Olivia Lewis, young lady, came over from Eastern 6'2". Madison Cass, who's been here 6'2". You have uh, Jayla Burgess, who's been here 6'1", 6'2". Um, Caleb Pavinska, good freshman coming in, is about 6'. And then you have some wings that are 5'10", 5'11". Right. So, I mean, we've got some good size. I mean, rebounding, to me, is not a size thing, too, though. It's, right. it's an effort thing. So right. we've really preached that. And um, But it's... Yeah, I mean, we, I think we've got a really good mix of kids that can really shoot it. We've got some down low being able to play right. that high low system that I kind of like. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's been fun to see how they've all come together. So you brought some fans in today so the players could get ready for games coming up. Well, you've got games coming up, so yeah. talk about what's coming up. Yeah, baptism by fire. <laughs> yeah, That's what exactly. it is. So we have, uh, uh, we have Central Missouri coming Friday at 1.30 okay. over at the First United Bank Center. Uh, Central Missouri, I mean, I don't know where the polls will come out or not by then. Bryce, but I, I know Central Missouri, if they do, will probably be top five. Right. I mean, they were in the Final Four last year. And then you have the next day, one thirty Saturday, the 30th, we have uh, Drury University who played for the national championship last year. Right. And then, lo and behold, on Saturday, it doesn't get any, or excuse me, Sunday at 4 o'clock, doesn't get any easier. You have Southwestern Oklahoma, who, to be honest with you, probably would have been in the lead eight if it wasn't for Lubbock Christian last year. Right, right. You know, so, right. I mean, you got three of the probably top 15 teams in the country that will be here. So people look at it 50-50 kind of a thing, you know, but, again, you get a good read on what your yeah. club's doing against top top competition. Absolutely. I mean, and that's that's what you want. You want to be able to see what your kids can do against the best competition. You know, when I was at Eastern, you know, one thing we would do every year, we'd play Arizona and New Mexico. Right. And that gave me a great perspective right. of where we're going to be and what we needed to work on. And that's so it's kind of similar to that here, you know. I mean, I think that these teams are obviously not Arizona, you know, and not New Mexico, but – they're really, really, really fantastic teams that'll give us the good ideas of what we need to do. Right, Buffalo's trail five to nothing here to Commerce at the half. We're visiting with Josh Prockett, basketball coach for the Lady Buffs, and so, uh, so you are familiar with the Lone Star Conference, obviously. And so, as you get through these games, and obviously it's an important time. I know you're not going to jump way ahead, but when you kind of look at what the conference has this year, what are the concerns? Who who do you feel like is probably some of the favorites? Well, I mean, you're going to have your traditional love of Christian. Right. I mean, they're going to be there again. They have their two two of their best players coming back. Right. Um, Texas A&M Commerce will be right. really good again, and you know, I think we're going to be pretty good as well too. And I, you know, I think after that, I mean, you got kind of a just a bunch of teams that are that are kind of an unknown, unknown a little bit, just because they've got a lot of new kids coming right. in as well too. And but it'll be a, it'll be a very competitive league. I mean, I'm thankful for a tough non-conference schedule because that'll prepare us for that. So it'll be fun to see. What does from a coaching standpoint, real quick, because we talked about that with this Commerce football team, 31 new players coming in this season. The transfer portal allows yeah. a lot of things to take place, and so. What is that a – obviously, it's a plus. can also be a minus. And so how do you look at that as far as what teams are doing in the conference? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on the, on the team and what they're right. going to do. But uh, the transfer portal, I mean, I, you know, but I'm an eternal optimist. So yeah. I'll look at the portal as a positive. Right. You know, I mean, we, we at Eastern, when I was there, we didn't have very many kids transfer out, but we right. used it on the other side as a positive. And right. I think we'll have uh, the same thing here. I mean, we'll, we'll use it when we need to, right. when we think there's a kid out there that we need to go get. 
But, um, you know, our first and main goal, just to kind of get to this a little bit, is going to be recruit this area. Right. I mean, it's got a lot of talent. I mean, I, you don't have to look very much farther than right. what Lub Lubbock's been doing with, right. the, with these kids. And so, right. Right. to me, we need to try to go get some of those right. kids. And I guess my point, and what I was trying to get to a little bit there, not so much what we're doing here locally with the portal, but what are some of the conference teams yeah. doing with the portal? Yeah, and I think it's, Commerce is a good example of yeah. a team. You know, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. You know, Commerce is a great example of, uh, that has used it to their advantage. I right. mean, I know St. Mary's has got a kid this year. Um, you know, St. Edwards and Midwestern and people like that have all gotten kids. So I think people are using it to plug some holes here or there. Right. And I think Commerce has used it more so just to kind of fill their team in a sense. And is that what coaches are doing a little bit more now when they do know they have a, a hole or a weakness or something like that? They can go out and grab that. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, it, it kind of gives kids a little more freedom to if they're not happy where they are, if they just don't feel like they fit there, go hit the portal and see if they can find something better for them. Well, it gets underway this week. No, not down the road. <laughs> it's coming up <laughs> yeah. on Friday. And, again, and so the game time, once again, on Friday? Friday's at 1.30. 1.30. Okay. So you get an opportunity to come out and watch the Lady Buffs play against great competition this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right? Friday at 1.30, Saturday at 1.30, Sunday at Sunday. Sunday at 4 o'clock and the other two days at 1.30. Yeah, so 1.30 and 4 o'clock. Get a chance to come out and watch the Lady Buffs play. Um, we have some great basketball action going on in the area. And so a great chance for you to come out and watch Coach Brock and the Lady Buffs and see what, how this season kicks yeah. off. I appreciate it. We're looking forward to it. Josh, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very it. much. All appreciate right. you. Buffs Trail 5 to nothing. We'll talk about that after we take this time out. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. The In Express halftime show where the Buffs trail five to nothing to Commerce. And yeah, it's an unusual score. I understand five to nothing. And so we're, we haven't seen the scoring, but we've seen Ken Johnson a lot of other things. Well, things you don't normally see. Right. Safeties. I mean, when was the last time <laughs> Nick Gerber fumbled a handoff exchange? Right. It, it, it right. doesn't happen. Right. Um, you know, it, it's it's a wild game. We have seen everything except touchdowns. And as Hunter Hughes said during our interview a few minutes ago it's still a one possession game anything can happen now the defense lets up commerce can steamroll you well, but uh, you, you you keep playing and that's the thing we talked about the defense has played so well here in this first half but they also as hunter talked about they've been out there a long time too so yeah. they got to get a breather they got to get a break and then they've got to be able to you know uh, get the offense out there and get the offense to stay you know what's been interesting to me is that commerce has been making big plays they've been getting the big chunk plays but when they are third and two or whatever the buff defense is stonewalling them yeah absolutely and so the offense really needs to get going and so we, we would like to see what the offense did last week against eastern new Me you know eastern new mexico and kind of get on a little bit of a roll and that's what we're going to need in order to sustain. We had the opening drive, which was we really sustained it until we had until the, the fumble, and then yeah. Tobias Harris prevented a possible touchdown with right. his uh, interception. interception. 
Yeah. And uh, thank goodness number yeah. three is in the backfield for the Buffs. Well, we usually run through a lot of, of, of statistics for you, but there's not much other than that the rushing yard 63 for Commerce, 62 for the Buffaloes, 117 total yards for Commerce, 24 for the Buffaloes. And so, again, not – or that's the net passing yard, excuse me. 43 plays for Commerce, 180 yards. 27 plays for the Buffaloes, 86 yards. Just haven't been able to get the offense going. Well, but I'm sure David Bailiff is in his locker room saying we got to get the offense yeah. going too. 186 yards at the half. Just, you know, it's it's not going to get it done for either side. That's exactly true. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back right after this. Well, we'll stay right here as we get set for the second half kickoff. And so appreciate Josh Proc coming up as the Buffs get ready to kick this one away. All right, it'll be Mauricio Gonzalez that will kick off here for WT. It's high, it's angled to the far side, and it'll be returned from the 22-yard line. Commerce bringing it up quickly, and we're reversing to the opposite end at the 45, at the 50, into WT territory. That is a great return there for the Commerce Lions from D'Angelo Ellis, who is one of the big defensive backs for the Lions defense. Again, apologize. We had a nice interview with Josh Proc. Didn't get to our highlights, and... I can tell you real quickly, there's not a lot of highlights from the first half. And so so hopefully we'll have some here in the second half that will stick out a little more. But again, for the, whatever, the fifth time, the, the fifth drive of the ball game, great field position for the Commerce Lions. And so you, you think there's going to be adjustments made, obviously, and both teams offensively want to be much better. You just hope that WT, for their sake, that it's not Commerce that gets on track first, even though they do get the ball to start things. Yeah, they get the ball to start things, and they have a 12-yard completion on a pass on an out route that time. And so, again, looking at their receiver on the far side of the field, able to pull that one in for a first and 10. So Commerce will come out again. They had much more success, surprisingly, passing than running. But they want to get the run game established. Hale is not going to do it on this play. Eric Collins comes up, meets the running back for a big loss on the play. Drove him all the way back to the 40-yard line. They marked the forward progress up to about the 33. You know, one of the things, too, with Eric Collins, whatever you see him line up, if, if, again, if I'm a coordinator, I'm going to go, let's go the other direction. Let's go the other end of the field. And, again, they tried to run it to that far side of the field. That's where Eric was lined up. And, again, great read as he comes up and makes the, the tackle for loss. And so it'll be second down and 13 for Commerce. So, again, this defense continues to make some big plays. Smalls will throw on the run. Nice pass completed. And then it's a battle between Tobias Harris and the receiver on the outside, Matt Childers. Tobias trying all he could to, to fight there and then got some help from his linebacker teammate at the end running to the football. Was that Taylor Hickerson? That came up and helped on that one as well. And again, uh, Childers, one of those, you know, long, lengthy receivers, 6'4", 190 pounds. And again, taking on the smaller Tobias Harris and just tries to push him, but then got the great help to knock him out of bounds. So a third and long. They call it third and seven here for Commerce. Pass thrown. Chance Cooper, great catch. And he's got enough. Yeah, That's a first enough. down. Yeah. They have done that several times tonight. In this, fact, on third down, they're now 8 for 13. This is a great play call because you know where you got to get to. you got to get to the 18, so he goes up, makes sure he's at the 16, and is able to pull that one in for the first down. Commerce receivers. Childers with four catches. Armstrong with three. Proctor with a couple. Chance Cooper, that was his third catch. It's not flashy, but it's efficient. Yeah, it is. And that's the same thing you would say with Miklo Smalls. 16 of 30 passing, 146. Has yet to throw for a touchdown. They'll go with Carandall Hale on the ground, and he is able to carry Dylan Mata with him up to the nine-yard line for a nice six-yard run. J.T. Clevenger comes in and cleans that one up and helps out on the stop, and again, Lions with a nice drive. They work quickly. They fake it to the running back. Smalls keeps it, going to test that speed there. He's at the five and reaches the ball out. 
line judge looking back at the field oh, judge. and they lost the football. They gave, they gave him the touchdown on the run, Miklo Smalls. We'll look at this again on the replay. But the officials call a touchdown. You know, he reached out with the left hand, which is dangerous because yeah, he lost the football. But did he lose it? Did the officials say that they he reached across before the ball popped free? Here's a look at the replay. And he comes to the near sideline and becomes a foot race. And so right, he stepped out of bounds, actually. We don't have replay, but he stepped out of bounds at the two-yard line. That's one of the disadvantages of Division Two. You don't have replay because they would have looked at that on replay, and that would have been he would have they would have shown that he stepped out of bounds. At the I should have line. just called you and asked asked us up here in the booth, <laughs> I could Bryce. Have told him. It's yeah. a Commerce Lion touchdown <laughs> to start the third quarter, and so just like that, Texas A&M Commerce scores the first touchdown we've had tonight, and they take the lead. As the Buff fans are seeing the replay on the big board, it doesn't matter at this point. Twelve nothing, Commerce leads. We're back after this timeout on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. WT student athletes drink low fat chocolate milk post workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. But you're saying, oh, it's that he's. Scientific studies yeah. suggest that the immediate benefits of low yeah. fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, See, and higher recovery. You should be watching his feet. Add low fat chocolate milk to your post workout routine. Well, we're never going to be in agreement with officials if they call something for the opposing team. And then in that particular case, it was Miko Small stepping out of bounds at the two-yard line. The fans saw it on the replay on the big board. And so, again, and as he reached for the pylon, he lost the handle on the football. So in two different cases, it shouldn't have been ruled a touchdown. But nevertheless, it is, and it's a 12 to nothing lead for Commerce. Kickoff coming from Viquez, and it'll be a return from the 11-yard line for Marshall. Started right, comes back left, and a great tackle from behind. Good speed and then perfect form on the wrap-up from number 22, Deontay Smith. And so this is where it becomes dangerous, Bryce, for, for West Texas A&M. You only, you only trail 12 nothing, but the problem is you only have 86 yards of offense in the first half. And if you don't get started early here, the Lions are going to start catching well, fire. Well, and the problem is the Lions have been living offensively in the WT end of the field all game long. And WT has been living in their own end of the field all game long. And so they have not been able to get across the 50-yard line and make anything happen offensively. See if WT makes adjustments offensively. Right now, there you see the receiver set here on yeah, the near a side. Stack on either side. On first down, they throw it to the far side. Markel Stevens Peppers gets a catch and then runs into two Commerce Lion defenders and is rudely taken down. Good defense as it's Shillow and also big number zero out there. For Commerce, the linebacker D. Walker, who led them in tackles through the first half, by the way, with six. So a four-yard pickup on that one, on that stack play. Now, Steven Peppers comes to the near side. Kind of looked like he was hobbling a little bit. So it's second down and six as they gave Steven Peppers a four-yard gain. Blair will take the carry. Two blockers in front of him. Good cut inside, and that's a first down run. Nice, uh, nicely designed as anytime you get two 300 plus pounders pulling in front of you as the running back, you like that. Yeah, absolutely. You want that freight train in front of you. And so, again, you just hitch on your caboose and you get to the first down marker. And nice pickup for the Buffs. So they flip Brandon over to the right side, three receivers. For WT on this play, and they run the same thing to the left side. Good lead block. Well, that's kind of a late hit out of bounds on that one. As he was out of bounds and coming over, kind of making a hit after the fact. D. Walker, D. Walker again. Walker, yeah. It's going to be his eighth tackle of the game. And for Brandon Blair, it was a pickup of four yards. It was a good block, uh, the lead block from the left guard, Jacoby Lott. Blair tries the right side this time, and nothing going. He's going to lose yardage. They string that play out. The plays 
running plays, at least, Bryce, that have been designed to get around the edge have not worked. No, and that's the thing. They're, they're trying to get to the outside because they can't go up the middle. They're not having any success going up the middle. Credit Commerce's front three on that or front four on that, they've been able to gum it up all night long. And so the only avenue is to get to the outside, but that hasn't worked overly well so far in the ball game. Not much has. Third down and six now for the Buffaloes, trailing 12 nothing early third quarter. Pass thrown to the outside, caught, and Olison is hit immediately. And, oh, he's one yard short of the marker. One yard. Fourth and one. What do you do, Hunter Hughes, well, from your own 40-yard line? That's where you're going right foot, left foot. And where his left foot was, it was almost to the 41, and then he moved his right foot back. And marked it there. They marked it back at the 40. Okay, Jordan Johnson comes in, and he will be the quarterback under center. So the Commerce recognizes that and puts everyone up on the line. Johnson trying to get movement. Now he pulls back and looks over to the sideline. And that's got to be an offside. Yeah, that's contact. The, the talented linebacker, D. Walker, he kept coming, like acting like he was going to blitz, and then... Came a little too far and is going to get an offsides penalty. His teammate comes over and Dominic Ramsey says, that's all right, man, we'll, we'll get it back. But there you see clearly oh, across the line of scrimmage. So it's a first down. Well, other than the opening drive, this is the best drive of the ball game for the Buffalo so far. And the opening drive was great until they fumbled it. Yep. So. That is the seventh first down of the game for the Buffaloes. Pressure coming for Commerce. Gerber avoids it, throws down the field, nobody open. He overthrows, uh, just kind of gets gets rid of the football, basically. But uh, he was a, throwing to a spot in the on the field instead of looking to see where his receiver was. And I'm not sure if if the receiver was tripped up a little bit, but he was well behind the pass area. And, and the blitz that time, Bryce, was a corner blitz. It yeah. was Cater Cahoo, yeah. the senior from Euglas who uh, was a member of the 2014 National uh, Championship team, 2017, excuse me. And this is a handoff to Compton, again, trying to get outside. Jared just does. Let's see where the official spots him out of bounds. Looks like at midfield. Right at midfield. Didn't really give him a good spot on that one either. And so, again, yeah, nice run by Jared. As he's got the speed, and it's just trying to string out what the defense is trying to do. You want to cut it back, but he knew that, that there just wasn't any place to go with it. This WT offense averaging 39 points a game. Yeah. Tops in the conference, basically. And Commerce is, is uh, up for the challenge tonight, not allowing a single point to this part of the game. There's a pass complete and then tipped and is tripped up. And the line judge says, I've got a spot where he is across the, the line to gain. That's going to be a first down WT. So yeah, He was adamant. The line judge was that it's a first down as he marked it across the 45. So nudging towards more of the 44-yard line. Take those first downs. Yeah. Especially tonight. Blitz coming again here for Commerce. Olison goes in motion. They hand it to him on reverse. No, they faked it. Gerber keeps it. Gerber escapes one tackler. He's at the 30-yard line and then pushed out of bounds there after a nice play. That was a great fake. Commerce defense, everybody went with Olison and Nick kept it. Yeah, it was a great fake. A little, little, uh, little play action that time. And again, as he pulls it back, he only has one man to beat. And again, good pursuit, good speed, but he was able to get around it and pick up another first down. Buffaloes work quickly here. Ger uh, Gerber hands it off to Blair. Yeah, that's kind of quickly wrapped. No, he's quickly wrapped up. Bryce, nowhere to go. That's what you'd like to see. You'd like to see the tempo start to pick up a little bit for the offense right now. They kind of have Commerce on their heels a little bit, and so let's go with a little tempo. That was number 32, Brendan Young, who came up, another defensive back. Six one, two hundred pound senior. They have several transfers from Arkansas. He's one of those. Plays a linebacker, DB, safety spot. Gerber rolls to the right, just dumps it to Carn Bay, who catches it. Jeremy Carn Bay is going to dive forward for a first down to the 20-yard line. Nice job there for the Buffs. Nice use of your tight end again that time. Again, a rollout. The tight end rolls with 
the quarterback, and again, Jeremy just puts his hand up, and Nick timely gets it up the field, and so it picks up another first down. So that's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back first downs for the Buffaloes. And you like to see the 6'4", 240-pound senior from Portales get involved in the offense. You, you like to see us utilize the tight end even more, and that's the thing that we haven't done as much this year. And so, uh, again, nice opportunity with Cornbay. We'll step aside, take a quick timeout as they check on the injured player for Commerce. Buffs on the move, trailing 12 0, 7 13 to play here in quarter number three. We're back after these messages. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. For the taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. Well, the best drive of the ball game so far for the Buffaloes, they have it inside or right at the 20-yard line, ready to go into the end, the red zone, I should say. They trail on this one by a count of 12 to nothing. And again, the Buffs offense now has got some yards through the air, 93 yards on the ground, 50 through the air, so 143. Commerce has 220, but most of the WT yards have been on this drive. And so they get set first and 10 as this is their – Third, first down in a row. Gerber in the gun. Gives it to Blair. A little jump cut and is able to make about a three-yard gain there. Again, Blair, the main runner tonight. He's got now 10 carries. Gerber has ran for eight times for 28 yards. Jordan Johnson a couple times and Jared Compton four times. With Khalil Harris unable to go tonight. You're getting close to Jordan Johnson country right here. Gerber wants to throw on second down. Has a receiver wide open. And oh. Olison saw that ball go right between the bread basket. Oh, and man. You, and you could hear the crowd did the same thing you did up yeah, here, I Bryce. It. I know it. I, I, that was an easy touchdown, and Olison just dropped and couldn't find a handle on that one. And it is one of those, I think, what he did was he was trying to make sure both his, his feet, feet were in bounds. Yeah. And so he looked to see where the back line was, and when he did, he took his eye off the football and dropped it. That was a great play, great pass, great call. Just couldn't complete it. So third down and seven now from the Commerce line 17-yard line. Gerber still looking. Will rifle this into the end zone, sliding in and trying to make the catch, but not able to was Hunter Kaufman, and so it's fourth down. And so we will see, Bryce, the Lone Star Conference Special Teams Player of the Week, Kaysen Palavoda, a 5'8", 145-pound true freshman from right here in Amarillo out of Caprock High School. Palavoda had a great ball game last week against Eastern New Mexico, trying to continue that as well. Yeah, he kicked three field goals last week, including a 44-yarder. This one will be a 34-yard try. If you're the Buffs, though, you got to make sure you block and don't let Commerce slide through. Snap was good. Hold down, and Paul Avoda's kick is right down the middle, and we have points on the board for West Texas A&M. They trail now by the score of 12-3 with 6.26 to play in the third quarter thanks to Paul Avoda's 34-yard field goal. We'll take the break come back with the kickoff right here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Yep. Hey.
Days are built on mornings. And Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings. Burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm. Yeah, all right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast. Topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. Well, the longest drive of the night for the Buffalo is a 15 play drive that covers 65 yards. Took five minutes, 45 seconds off the clock. And the Buffs get a 35 yard field goal as the Buffs get on the scoreboard trail now by a count of 12 to three. And so it'll be a kickoff. We got points, West Bryce. Coast, we've got points. <laughs> Come on now. And again, we go back and, and we, you know, that's the hard part. We had the opportunity for a great touchdown catch. And unfortunately, you know, not being able to find the handle on the football, Caleb Olson, as he had a nice route, great run, and was in the end zone, and then just looked to the back to make sure his feet were in bounds and took his eye off the football. So here's the kickoff. Ramsey takes it on the run from the six-yard line, works quickly up to the 20, breaks a tackle, stays on his feet at the 35, and then Eric Goodman comes from behind and is able to make the tackle as Ramsey gives the Lions good field position again, and Commerce has the 12-3 well, lead, 6-16 to play third quarter. And again, we have a good weapon like Ramsey on kickoffs, and so the thing you do know about it is that you anticipate – that he's going to give you 20 to 30 yards on the return. Mm. So you should have good field position. And so uh, the other way we can look at it is it's probably one of the more worst field starts in the ball game for Commerce. That's true. In tonight's ball game because they're they've, still they've been Commerce close to territory. midfield. Yeah, they've been at midfield or in Buffalo territory most of the night. So Miklo Smalls will direct the offense here, hand it to J.T. Smith. Good cut. Smith is able to weave through traffic and gain 10 yards on that run. He's taken down by Eric Collins and Kanate. Very elusive runner mm. that time because he looked like he was going to the outside, had a defender going up to try to make the tackle, and then just planted his foot, cut back to the inside. That's all he was able to pick up a 10 on that one. It looked like he was going to be thrown, not thrown for a loss, but would have kept the, the gain to a couple of yards. Commerce now starting to get their rushing going They're a little bit. They're starting to get really in rhythm. 84 that's, rushing yards. That's the thing that's worrisome. To go along with 146 through the air here tonight. This time the run does not work as Jalen Hill beat his man uh, right off the line and disrupted that play through the runner for a loss of two yards. Yeah, nice job by the defense that time as Chris Thomas comes up as well as Xavier Rivera to help out on the stop. So the Buffalo is able to put pressure on the running back and throwing back for a two-yard loss. Clock runs, getting closer now to five minutes to play here in the third quarter. Buffs trailing by nine. Commerce has had a field goal, a safety, and one touchdown. Pass thrown, caught. Receiver breaks, tackles, and has a first down. That's a completion on the outside to Armstrong. And that just tells you Eric Collins' football sense because he was going up to the line of scrimmage and then saw what the quarterback was doing, so he broke to an area and saw where the pass was going and was able to make that tackle from behind. But, again, not before, another first down for Commerce uh, in Buffalo territory, obviously at the 37-yard line. Commerce brings in at running back, Carandall Hale. A career rushing yardage total of 1,800-plus yards for that young man. He's a good, talented running back. This time, Smalls has all day to throw. Nobody to throw it to, though. So he and his running back, Hale, had a conversation before the snap of the ball, and it looked like Hale was just going to say, okay, if you don't have the deep ball, which is what he was looking for, I'm just going to go up on a little curl turnaround and show you my numbers, and you can throw me a little – screen pass and so the Buffs read that nicely as the defender stayed with the running back didn't allow him to get free so he turns into a blocking back and so that's why the pressure came Buffalo's were able to put pressure on the quarterback and he had to basically throw it away and it was one of our favorite players this season Michael Smith that was able to apply the heat on second down they give it to Hale and Hale bursts free 
and has another Lions first down all the way to the 24-yard line. It's a 13-yard run for and Carandall thing, Hale. And the thing is, the reason why they are comfortable with this running back by committee kind of a thing is because they all hit the hole fast. And so all very tired to get there. They're not, they're not worn out. They're not tired. And they get there quickly. And so the block only has to be instantaneous for them to get through. Twelve to three, our score. Three thirty-eight left to play here at Jayford Field. Buffalo's trailing by nine. And Carandall Hale warming up as running back. They're going to give it to him again, and this time, the Buffs push through as J.T. Cavender and also Eric, Eric Collins. Collins. Yep. Which really, WT, that the linebackers have been so solid for a long time, several years, where it seems like you've got a guy at linebacker that is one of the tops in the conference yeah. this year. It's JT Cavender that leads the way in tackles. Eric Collins is that guy that when you need a big play, it seems like he always comes through. He really does. He has a good sense of what teams are trying to do and is able to get there and make a stop when you need it. So a second down and 12 now. We're under three minutes to play, third quarter. From Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium, Buffs bring pressure, and it's going to be a sack. That was Taylor Hickerson that came off the edge, and then J.T. Cavender came down the middle, and the Buffs get a big sack. They get Smalls all the way back to the 31-yard line. Yeah, nice pressure that time as Hickerson came around on a blitz and came to the outside and then was able, as you can see here, he goes to the outside and then circles back around, and they're able to help out on the stop for that loss. Nice play to mix it up mm -hmm. a little bit defensively. And, you know, Bryce, from seeing Smalls two years ago, and he's still a very talented yes. quarterback, you can tell. He doesn't have the movement right now. Right. You know, that he's had in the past. In terms of his burst. Yes. This guy has some burst, Carandall Hale. He takes the run and gains yardage back to the 25-yard line, so a six-yard run. It is going to be now fourth down and JT. long, so they should kick a field goal. J.T. Kavanagh comes up, makes the stop nicely done. As Again, he will loops around and is able to make the tackle to force this fourth down and 11. 48-yard 40, try. The Buff players urging the crowd to make some noise. Is it 42, 48, or 42? I think it's uh, 42. The snap is good. Hold down, and Viquez, his kick, has the distance, and it is good. So three more points added on here for Commerce. Second field goal of the game for Jake Viquez. And it's now 15-3, to Texas A&M Commerce leading. We'll take a timeout, come back with a kickoff right after this. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Well, a nine-play drive for Commerce takes almost five minutes, 4.59 off the clock, and they settle for a 42-yard field goal. So both teams kind of giving back and forth here uh, toward the end of the third quarter on field goal attempts. And so the Buffs on the scoreboard, but now yeah. they trail by 12. 12 once again. And Bryce, the thing now with Commerce starting to get their offense on track, and even though they only get three points there, they're controlling the clock, they're having these long drives. Right. WT has got to be done with field goals at this point. Right. No, they need no, touchdowns. They've got to have touchdowns. And so that's exactly where you've got to have some big, some big plays. You've got to look into that arsenal that you have. And again, you, you've had a chance to see what they're doing defensively. So what can you do to, to compensate or to overwork what they're doing defensively? and make some things happen for your offense. So the kickoff from Viquez, they've been angling it to that far side. They'll do it again from the 17-yard line. Heston Marshall slips and falls at the 26-yard line, and that is where WT will start to drive. And yeah, he wanted to plant his foot and cut to the outside that time and just lost his footing. And so that 
unfortunately on turf fields that does happen from time to time. Kind of just lose, get a little slippage out there and lost his footing. We appreciate the support of all of our sponsors here tonight on the broadcast on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Texas Farm Bureau, one of those, obviously, and uh, supporting the broadcast all season long. Not uh, here for the football broadcast, also the other broadcast we provide. There's a pass thrown. That should be incomplete. It is. Begardus never had it. And one of the reasons why he never had it, Bryce, was because Cater Kahu was <laughs> on him. Your favorite name. Immediately. <laughs> and... What a big hit. Yeah, he really did. And, again, there was a block there, but he fought off mm. the block and put the hit as soon as the ball got there. And then he tried to sell it that he intercepted it instead it hit the ground. So WT has second down and 10 with just a little over a minute to play in the third quarter, trailing 15-3. to three. They give it to Blair. Good hole up the middle. And that's a, a big run, a gain of 10 yards there for Brandon Blair. Should be a Buffalo first down. Yeah, and so a nice run again off the right side between the center and the right guard. Big open hole that he was able to run through and then pick up a first down. His best run of the night. Three receivers coming to the near side. Gerber will come up to his center, Zane Madison, and change the play. Commerce has brought pressure throughout this ball game. They go with a handoff over the left side. Blair with a jersey. His jersey being pulled. Drags a defender for a five-yard gain, but a flag is thrown. Well, that's usually holding. Well, Gerber's pointing toward Commerce. Yeah, because in this particular case, Patrick Gray. Okay. Okay. Big one there for against the Lions. Here's a replay. It was was it? And I don't, I didn't see it on him. I uh, Patrick Gray was the one that was being taken down, and so that's what where I thought maybe it came from because away from it, away from the play, he was being taken down. Gerber will throw, and overshoots the intended receiver. Maxwell Perez, Dominic Ramsey came in and. Well, Put a big hit at the end of that play. Ramsey lowered his head, and they took out the receiver on that after the there ball it is. had been flashing by. You yeah, can you're see right. He and it, it, and made helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. That's why Coach Hughes is so frustrated. Let's, let's look at that replay one more time, if we can, because Max is down on the turf. So, yeah, and, and here, there's, it is, here it is right here. As you can see, the Really pass. unnecessary. And so it's over his head, but then he does make that contact, and then and again, the officials should get together on this one. It, it's overthrown, and, and so here the, the corner, the defensive back comes in, but dips, and Bryce, the thing, that the reason why WT is, fans are so upset is because it's not really the shoulder pad that makes contact. No, it's it's his helmet. helmet. And so and it should be, that should be a personal foul. And so the officials are talking about it, but again, you know, they didn't call it to begin with, so they're going to come over and explain why it wasn't called. And so Hunter, obviously irate, is trying to get his point across. But it's the line judge that was right there that didn't pull the flag, didn't make the call. And so that's really what has Hunter quite upset. And again, they can't believe that there's no uh, – they're obviously – and this is what officials will tell you. They're not going to look at the replay. You can see it on the replay. We've seen it three times on the replay. But they aren't going to look at the no. replay and agree with you on it. And so this is a, kind of a bubbling over of everything that's taken place here so far tonight that Hunter is getting his $5 worth here <laughs> with, the, with the head referee. Yeah, at some point you're going to have to go on to the next play. But it, and it will be second down and 10 uh, from the Commerce 44-yard line reset for you. The score, 15-3. to three. Texas A&M Commerce leading. And he's now going to go down and give the side judge a near full as well. And well, he and has the, to be careful. He's out of the coach. And the thing is, Bryce, also you look at Commerce, they're feeding off of these boos. Oh, the yeah, players are, are getting fired up. They're ready for the next play defensively. Gerber will work from the gun, and they'll go to Blair. Blair runs straight ahead. 
and is able to pick up decent yardage up to the 42-yard line. This should be the last play of the quarter, and so we will head to the fourth quarter in uh, a low-scoring game tonight here in a Lone Star Conference battle. Commerce will take a 15-3 lead into quarter number four. We're back after this timeout here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shim and Dill Group for your appointment today. Well, the fans are jumping around here at Jayford Field, Kimbro or Jayford Field Buffalo Stadium. We get and some points for the light show. Oh, yeah. That, that, definitely gets Fantastic. Fire, fired up and again fired up was how hunter hughes was during the timeout for the quarter change as he definitely he, he got, thought maxwell perez had a helmet to helmet and he hit did, against him and he obviously did and the official missed it and that's why he was just chewing on the officials here as we go in the fourth quarter of the win unfortunately has picked and, up and we're going into the win and wt still needing to get that offense going 164 total yards of offense gerber in trouble and gerber is going to be slung down to the turf for a sack back at the 50 yard line and that was shooting through number 93. yeah nice pressure nice pressure nice press at time jalen hodge commerce as hodge comes in and then sidesteps a block and is able to wrap up the quarterback and so, yeah, just like that, the crowd is hushed. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's what good defenses will do. And so, again, um, just a nice stop by the Commerce Lions. And, again, we've had these battles with this team for a long time. Koash punts it away. Ramsey retreats and fields it from his own 11-yard line. And a good job that time the Buffs were able to bottle him up as it's Gage Smith that comes up and makes that tackle on the special teams. Interesting to see now as we've kind of gone through everything that took place at the end of the third quarter going into the fourth quarter and see how the officials, you know, start to watch, especially what the offensive line's doing for Commerce. See if there's a little movement, see if there's, you know, some little holdings that are going on a little bit. And so trying to... Uh, not appease mm -hmm. <laughs> the home sideline, but in order to – they they know they blew it, and they know that, that that should have been a call that was made on a personal foul. Miklos Smalls from his own 12-yard line throws it, and it's broken up. Nice defense there on the outside for the Buffaloes by Anozi. He's had a good game tonight. He's had probably the best game of the season yeah. that he has had so far. He has some really good reads. He's been able to watch to see where Smalls is going with the football and has anticipated getting there and making some nice tackles tonight. Stops the clock with 14.04. Left in the fourth quarter. Commerce with two running backs in there is Lately AA sets... As a lead blocker, they hand it coming back the opposite direction to Carandall Hale. And he's got close to a first down. It's going to be a third down and very short coming up here for Commerce. Again, that's a different set with two running backs back with a quarterback. First time we've seen that in the ballgame tonight. 
And again, it's a little misdirection. You have one going one way, and you hand off to the other going the other. And so a nice pickup for Hale on that scamper. Crowd, again, makes some noise. The crowd, you know, you look across here, Bryce, the Maroon Platoon, the oh, students, yeah. they have stayed, and they have obviously been loud throughout the ball game. The Buffs still in it, trailing by 12. But Commerce will run straight ahead, and they will not pick up this first down. Xavier Rivera exactly. and, and JT Cavender as well. man right there as he holds his ground, does a nice job and makes the tackle. He brings it fourth down at two. Nice job by JT and One. by X-Man. Injured lineman uh, down for Texas A&M Commerce. You know, Bryce, next week these two teams, uh, Buffaloes head to Texas A&M Kingsville for a Saturday evening matchup with uh, the Javelinas. The Lions will be at home, and that will be a big game for Texas A&M Commerce, especially if they're able to win tonight. They'll take on UT Permian Basin. Yeah, and again, of course, way the conference is – set up in this one right now the buffs at three and one commerce at two and one and so they are trying to obviously climb up and and challenge midwestern state who uh, again midwestern with a four and oh record wt at three and one permian and commerce at two and one and angela two and two and so that's how the district or how should say how the conference is Heading into tonight's ball game, A&M Kingsville is at Western New Mexico. Simon Frazier played at Angelo State. Eastern New Mexico is UT Permian Basin, Midwestern State, taking on Tarleton, an old foe from uh -huh. the Lone Star Conference. And then, of course, the game we have right here. So those updated scores, uh, one I've got here, Angelo State in control at home over Simon Frazier, 43-10, to 10, early fourth quarter. Midwestern State. This one, 7-7 seven, seven with Tarleton in the third quarter. Eight minutes and change to play there. Got a punting situation here. All right, so Buffaloes will get it back. Tobias Harris fields it from his own 38-yard line, and he can't go anywhere. He's going to go backwards. Another good special team. That's the second time tonight that we've said Darius Williams' name as he makes another great tackle. Well, and again, Commerce... And we knew coming into this one, they're a good team, good, solid football team. And so they are able to, you know, make some things happen. We'll step aside for the media timeout. 13 minutes to play in the ballgame. Buffs trailing 15-3. to three. We're back right after this. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physicians Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. Welcome back to Jayford Field. The Buffaloes trail 15-3, 265 yards so far for Commerce, 155 for the Buffs. And again, the Buffs' best drive of the ballgame was their last one when they were able to settle in for a field goal. Great to see 6,100 on hand for this one tonight. It'd be great to see a Buffs touchdown. Nick Gerber will throw it to Jordan Johnson and Johnson slides under a defensive lineman and somehow is able to fall forward. He's always falling forward, he, Bryce, to the 41-yard line. That's why he's one of our favorite players, just by his determination all the time. And so I would just keep him out there and just try to keep feeding him the football and just see if he can just run over people. Second down and five. They stay on the ground, and Blair runs into a wall. That wall being named, number 92, Dominion Azingwa, who is a transfer of Bryce from UCLA. <laughs> I was going to say Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. No, this and, that, and that is, you, you talked about in the pregame too a little bit, 31 transfers that have came in to Commerce this year. A lot of those are D1 players that have come from other universities. Third down and three. 
That's why it's tough sledding, especially against this defense tonight. Single coverage on the outside, Bogardis, the receiver. Now that linebacker's offside. They throw it to Blair out of the backfield. Brandon, let's see where they mark him out of bounds. Oh, he got a favorable spot. He did. He gets uh, <laughs> two yards past the first down marker. I was wondering if he was going to get yeah, the first I did down. Too. I was wondering if he was going to get it. It looked like he, he went out of bounds, but that may have been one of those made up. Bryce, goals. we try. We try <laughs> to be honest, fair, right? Yeah. Here's the handoff to Blair over the right side. Good blocking, and that was interesting. Madison had his man turned in, and yes. that's right where Blair ran. He Looks like the hole was outside. He was trying to figure out where to go, and so he saw an opening to the inside. That's why he cut that way. But as you said, as soon as he did, Madison turned his guy to the inside, and so unfortunately kind of turned him right into the running back. Still a gain of four for Brandon, who again has been the feature running back tonight. He now has close to 60 yards on the ground. And another run for Blair. And this is good. This is, this is good that the Buffs are able to run here, Bryce. But the clock is also running yeah, as well. the clock's running as well. And we're trailing by 12 points. And so touchdowns are the optimum here. And you want to get them quicker or sooner. And so the Buffs kind of taking their time here getting this play as the play clock is running down. Yeah, I I'm not understanding trying this. To get personnel in there. They're trying to get the right personnel in there. Now the official is going to come up and stop them because that'll allow commerce to change. And so they're going to use nearly the whole play clock. Yeah. It's at seven seconds, six seconds. Guys, we're down by 12 points. And, oh, and, man. and they call a timeout. We'll take the timeout as well. 10 20 to play, fourth quarter, and WT trailing by 12 points to Texas AM Commerce. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. Welcome to Metadrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our HealthMart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. 15 to 3, Commerce with the lead, and the Buffs had to burn a timeout. They didn't have the personnel in there that they wanted. And they also burned nearly the entire play clock. Yeah. And so it is the, the down and distance. You got third and one for West Texas AM. Jordan at, Johnson under center. Okay. Yeah, they're on the Commerce 43 yard line. Jordan takes it. Quarterback sneak. Pile moves forward. He's got one yard and a Buffs first down. Again, Jordan, it's been interesting. When he gets the football, he has that kind of oomph that the Buffs are needing right now. And I would keep him out there, too, as a running back. Carn Bay's the tight end, set to the right. And Johnson just barely got that handoff from Nick Gerber. He's able to gain one yard. Gerber nearly got taken out as they brought a blitz on the outside and the Buffs did not pick it up. And that's where, he, again, they they know Jordan Johnson. They Everybody knows Jordan Johnson. And so you see him in there, that's a good time to go with a tight end or something along that line as they're concentrating on what they expect to be the handoff to Jordan. Then you got a tight end that may be free. Here's Gerber. He'll step up and start to run and slide down at the 34-yard line, short of the first down by about three yards. Very manageable third and three coming up. Well, he did a nice job that time. He, again, had nobody open up the field, and so he just touched the football, takes off, and able to elude one tackle, and that allowed him for a and nice pickup. And I hate to 
pick on this subject, Bryce, but we're still taking way too, too much long. time. The yeah. play clock is at this 10 is seconds, it? 9 seconds. You want to see a sense of urgency. You want to see tempo. They snap it with three seconds on the play clock. Gerber looking left. Nobody's open. Now he's in trouble, and it's caught by Tyree Tipton, and Tyree goes backwards. He does. He's slung down. Good play on the outside for the Lions in the secondary as they corral Tyree Tipton. Well, and again, Tyree did a nice job of working back to the football, but really there wasn't anything there for the Buffaloes as they tried, uh, tried to look up the field a little bit out in the flat, but that coverage was so great that he had to force it to Tyree. And again, Tyree was short of the first down. So now it is fourth down and three for West Texas A&M. Gerber got to pick this one up, and it's intercepted. It is going to be picked off. Intended receiver was Begardis. You couldn't tell because D'Angelo Ellis stepped right in front. All over, knew where it was going all over Begardis and just – Comes in and makes a nice pick on that play. He's a transfer from Rice, 6'1", 195-pound senior from Cypress, Texas. And so Commerce will get the football back. And if they go on another long drive, this is a good night, sweetheart. Well, the, the thing is, they just want to come up with positive points. And so if they can take some time off the clock and get up the field and even attempt a field goal, which they've tried several times tonight as well, then they come away with a victory. And again, Credit their defense. Their defense is the top defense in the league, and with, for good reason, as they've been able to hold WT to 185 yards here in the ball game so far. This is Smalls uh, throwing it outside, and it's going to be another line first down after number 88. Matt Childers is able to drag a defender two yards past the marker, and so picking up the first down again. It's he looks to the right side of the far side of the field and just finds his receiver. And then the buffs hit, but they don't take down the receiver. They don't wrap up the legs, and he's able to push forward and pick up three more yards and, and get a, make a 12-yard completion. Clock continues to run, 7-20 to play in the ballgame. WT trailing a score of 15-3. Smalls hands it off up the middle. J.T. Smith makes a cut. Is taken down at the end of the play by Tobias Harris after a gain of eight yards. And uh, Kent Johnson, uh, Bryce, has got a report for us. Let's head down to Kent. Okay, Kent. on receiver Maxwell Perez was not called helmet to helmet, but WT's athletic trainers have undergone the concussion protocol, ran the tests, and Maxwell's going to be held out the rest of the game. They're not going to say he has a concussion right now, but they're going to hold him out for precautionary measures. Hunter Hughes wasn't happy. 6,100 fans in the stadium weren't happy, and now I'm sure Maxwell's not happy. He's going to miss the rest of the game. Let's go back upstairs. Lucas, Bryce. All right, thanks, Kent. Yep, you're right, partner. There's not a lot of no, <laughs> happy not, people. I mean, that's just a miss. That's a blown call that the officials, I mean, it was clear that they blew the call, and so everybody here knows they blew the call yeah. as well. Commerce, though, you know, Bryce, just looking at this, the whole thing, Commerce has done enough. You want to say dominate? They have not dominated offensively in terms of stats, but their defense has dominated. Their they, defense is number one in, in, in the league. They give up 207 yards a ball game. The Buffs right now at 185, and so right on pace for that as well. And, and they're a dominant force. They really are. Their offense is okay. It's so-so. They've scored 15 points tonight, but they really haven't moved the football overly well. They have 291 yards, but they just it's been between the 20s, basically, and really it's been between the 30s because they haven't – other than that one score in the end zone, they haven't really made much happen. And Commerce on second down, play action, throw to Cooper. Cooper will step out of bounds. He may have been short of the marker, though. It looked like he was. Yep, he and is. And so, and also on that one, running along with him after he released the pass was Smalls, and it looked like he was limping quite a bit. And so showing a lot of favoritism to that 
right leg. So it brings up third down and about two. Nothing really explosive in their offense. No, but right now the, the second half time of possession has been huge oh, yeah, in yeah, favor yeah, of Texas A&M Commerce. Definitely. They've chewed up the clock tonight. Smalls, quick throw, caught on the outside by Armstrong. Penalty marker th is thrown. He's got the first down if it stands up to the 27, 28-yard line. Well, the way they're approaching everyone, it looks like it's going to be against Commerce. So let's see if there was a pick play or what they're calling on this one. So that's basically a huh. push off is what they're saying in order to get the receiver open. And so that'll benefit the buffs a little bit on this particular drive. But again, nice drive dropping, running the clock down to 429 left to play in the ball game. So looking at uh, the Commerce and Buffalo series history, this will not be the fewest points uh, in, in uh, the series because WT twice uh, was blanked and did not score. But certainly tonight, this is not what we had expected, Bryce, right. with uh, the offensive output. Smalls will roll to the right in trouble. Chase, good pursuit from JT Cavender and also Jalen Hill. Jalen had some words for Miklo Smalls, and Miklo has some for Jalen. And... Some of what Miklo may be talking about, the officials need to get both sides back and into their huddles, but Miklo is probably telling Jalen, uh, we're up by 12 here in the fourth quarter. Jalen's still playing hard, going after the quarterback, but this is what happens when you get these, these rivals together well, for the last again, time in this conference. Is, this is a rivalry game as well, and so both sides know, both teams know, even if they've got a lot of new players, they know the history of these two clubs. So a punt coming. End over and kick, and Tobias signals fair catch, makes it just shy of the 15-yard line. And this WT offense will get another opportunity. You look at the numbers, Bryce, at least the stats have been a little bit off tonight uh, from what we have up here in the press box. But for West Texas A&M, what do you have right now in the total yardage? Well, 185 yards, and again, the, the stat, the time is not correct on what we're looking at the stat sheet, but everything else is correct. So they've only been able to muster 185 yards in this game tonight, and that's 60. 60 uh, pa the, the glaring yards. thing is 60 passing yeah, yards. Yeah, and that's so unusual, especially for a we Russ Martin offense. Field. And so, again, when you kind of take a look at it, Nick's 10 of 21 uh, passing tonight. He does have the interception. His passer rating 62.1, and it, and, it, and it feels like that that he's earned that passer rating tonight, just cannot really get anything going offensively. I hate to break away from the chicken dance, but let's take a timeout, and we'll come back. It'll be WT with the football, trailing 15-3, uh, to 3, 3.54 to play, and we're back after this timeout on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. So another way to take a look at this ball game tonight with 3.54 left to play in the contest. The bus trailing 15-3. to three. And again, the offense will come out and go. We talk about 31 transfers coming in for Commerce tonight. Many of those are from Division I schools. And again, they're getting ready. They just were accepted into the Southland this week. And so getting ready to jump to Division I next year. So as we said earlier, we're kind of playing a Division I school based on just the scholarship athletes they have on the team right now. So Gerber out of the gun. Got to sling it around the yard now. Gets it to Olison for a nice gain of about seven yards on first down. Yeah, that was a nice pass, a little out route that time. Olison then turns, shows his numbers to the quarterback, and Gerber, Gerber quickly gets it to him. And again, this is where you want to see tempo. You want to see some, some quickness.
Another quick throw. Too high, though. Was trying to go right back to Olison, and it was over, well over his head. He couldn't reach that one. Stops the clock with 3.30. And just to be nitpicky a little bit, he got shoved out of bounds after the pass went sliding over his head. And so, again, you could say that was, he was a defenseless player. Now, he, nothing happened. He's okay. But it's just one of those that I know officials are looking at that this year. So quickly, third down and two for the Buffaloes. Jordan Johnson is a receiver in the slot. Gerber. And so, I, if he slides there, Bryce, he's short of the first down marker. He yeah, is. And they're going to mark him back where he slid. And the thing is, Jordan may have been the target that time. He was blocking. And he, well, he was, it looked like he was trying to get free, and the guy grabbed him and held on to him, and so he couldn't get free. And so that Jordan takes, or I should say, Nick takes off and then slides instead of running for the first down. Did the Buffs get the yeah, first they down? Did by the official at 25. They had, had to get to the 25, and they did. Yeah. So Jordan Johnson. That official, the lineman, line judge on the near side, he's hurt so much from Hunter tonight that he's going to go ahead and give him that. And he, and he made it anyway. And so you look on the replay, he fell forward to the 25. First and 10, Gerber. Good protection. Throwing down the middle of the field. Bogardus catches it at midfield. Noah will be taken down quickly after one of the biggest pass plays, obviously, of the night into Commerce territory at the 46-yard line. The Buffs get lined up quickly. They're getting trying to get ready to go again, picking up the tempo here on this series. Gerber looks right. We'll throw it again, and this one is picked off. It went right into the hands of the Commerce Lions safety, Dominic Ramsey, bringing it back at the 40, shakes off two defenders, and then finally is taken down at the 45-yard line. The Buffs' last gasp may have just been taken down uh, out right there. Well, again, that time Nick was trying to force the issue. He looks up the middle, and he had a receiver, but he throws it to the inside where he thought the receiver was going to go to the outside as you take a look at the replay here again has time there's pressure but he has time but he throws it to the inside where he thinks the receiver is going to go and the receiver was on the outside along the hash marks and that's where the interception came and so just the two weren't on the same page on that particular route so when we said this in pregame Bryce this is the last meeting uh, for the two teams in the Lone Star Conference, it's the last meeting, obviously, with Texas A&M Commerce playing in Division Two. They will make the jump to the Southland Conference next year and uh, start that initial stage, that process of competing at Division One. Smalls throws to the outside on the run, and it's on the money, by the way. Tackle is broken. Receiver Matt Childers makes a, a nice move, but... Yeah, and again, just a nice little pitch and catch from the quarterback to his receiver and again turns it upfield and so at this point with 150 the clock running right now anticipate they'll probably take as much of the play clock down as they can as they want to salt this one away and go home with a victory 15 to 3. You know speaking of low scoring games between these two teams if you go back on this date in 1948 Texas A&M Commerce defeated the Buffaloes 13 to 7 back in 1948. Wow. That was thanks to a, one of the stats from Josh Mank in the SI, uh, Sports Information Department of Texas A&M Commerce. Well, again, good rivalry with this school. And that, again, over the last several years, we've had some really good games with Commerce. And not just in football, but in all sports. Yeah. And so, again, we'll see that in basketball as well. You heard Josh Prock on our Halftime show talking about Commerce. That's one of those teams they'll be looking at as they get ready to go into conference play when the season gets underway. And again, the season getting underway this week. Yep. No score update from uh, Western New Mexico and Texas A&M Kingsville. A lot of times when those games are played at Western New Mexico, you don't get the scores until the next day. So uh, the knee is taken there from the Commerce Lions. We'll see if the two teams are going to shake hands or if they might not quite yet. Uh, some pushing and shoving going on, but they have they have battled it out. In particular, the two defenses really battled. Yeah, they really tough have. Tonight. And again, that's the sad part about this for the for the Buffaloes 
The defense has really played well tonight. They gave up one score. Everything else has been field goals or that one safety. And so, again, it's been a good defensive battle if that is what you like to see. Last time WT did not score a touchdown was last season when they took on uh, Stephen F. Austin. That's the final snap there. Commerce kneels, and the ball game ends in a 15-3 win for the Lions over the Buffaloes. And so Texas A&M Commerce will improve the overall record to five wins and three losses. Meanwhile, WT will drop to 4-4. Four and four. And again, you look at what the two teams do next week. The Buffaloes go on the road right. to take on a much improved Texas A&M Kingsville Havelina team. Right. And then Commerce goes back home to take on UT Permian Basin, who I saw live, uh, and they are very talented. A couple losses in conference uh, for them, but that'll be a big game. So, the, the, And the thing about that game, just set the stage here real quickly, with Commerce's defense, but UTPB's offense, that'll be a nice little mix and matchup on that one as well. So we'll see what happens in that ball game next week. But, again, we got to take care of things for ourselves as well as we travel on the road to Kingsville. All right, final score, 15-3, to Texas A&M Commerce with the victory. We'll take a timeout, get things uh, together in terms of statistics, and we will have the post-game show for you coming up after we take this timeout. We are family. More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? J. Ferg Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guide you every step of the way. That is the J. Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call J. Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are J. Ferg Roofing. We are more. Bud Light, proudly brewed in the heart of Texas. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo, Dumas, and Dalhart, and ask us about our free Whitening for Life program. Well, welcome back to Jay Ferg Field. To a game tonight that just we couldn't get anything going offensively in this one. 194 yards for the Buffaloes, 299 for Commerce. Did you Lions. forget your lucky socks I tonight, I Bryce? Did. I think I did. As Commerce comes away with this 15-3 to win, they didn't have a lot of offense either, but they did have a scoring strike in the second half, and they did settle for a few field goals that took place as well. And so, again, one of those tonight that just – we just couldn't get on track, and you got to credit the number one defense in the conference because Commerce has played so well defensively this season. Again, only allowing 207 yards on average per ball game, and again, the Buffs not able to even muster that. 193 for them, or 194 tonight, and so uh, statistically not a great night for the Buffaloes. Um, offensively, not a great night for WT. Uh, Commerce did what they needed to get done to move the football. 
and their defense took care of everything else. They did, and Bryce, you know, in, in pregame, I'm sure if some of the Buff fans were, were watching in our pregame, they might have been thinking they're really talking up this Commerce Lion defense. Yeah. Slow down, right? But it was the truth. It, I mean, and Hunter Hughes told me that Thursday night on the coaches show. Hunter's always honest. And uh, he said, this Commerce defense, they are extremely fast. They're very physical. He talked about a lot of the Division One transfers that were on this team. And so he knew that that record, that 4-3 and three record, was deceiving. Right. It right. wasn't going to be right. a, a game where the Buffaloes were going to just be able to waltz in here and expect to win. And the offense just never got on track. Well, and we go back to our keys of the ball game, actually, as we started this one tonight. We needed the offense to get off to a quick start. They did until they had a miscue and fumbled the football. Yeah. And then there was a series, as Coach Hughes talked about at our halftime interview with Ken Johnson, just a series of things that took place in that first half that just never allowed us to get in any kind of rhythm whatsoever. Turnovers were a problem uh, throughout the ball game. some miscues in special teams as well. That um, It's a game that I think Commerce leaves feeling like they did some good things, but they left a lot of points out there as well. Oh, no, they definitely did. They can't be pleased with their offense tonight at all, really. I mean, your quarterback gets back in. He does a few more things, probably getting comfortable with the offense, and so they're happy about that. And, again, he's still a special player. And Smalls is one of those guys that obviously did a lot for them in 2019. And he's still battling back from that leg injury he had earlier this year. But, again, he's just not the same that we saw a sure. couple of years ago. Sure. Now, the bright spots for West Texas A&M really is the defense. Played great. They, they did. really did. They played hard. Uh, you know, did big play. Terrace got another interception. Yeah. We talked about that. 16 career interceptions right. for Tobias, just two behind uh, the all-time leader for West Texas A&M. So he's getting close to breaking that record. It felt like the WT defensive line was able to apply some pressure in spots yes. against Smalls. Yes. But in the end, they just they were on the field too much, especially in the it's, second half. It's one of those where the defense did what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to hold. Sure. They did hold the offense from really getting on track, getting explosive, other than really one – one drive that resulted in a touchdown uh, for uh, Commerce. But other than that, they did what they were supposed to do tonight. It's just that the offense could not get anything going against this very talented defense for Commerce. And, again, it's a senior-laden defense. They have a lot of veteran experience on this club. And, again, we talked about it before the game in the Lone Star Conference. You, you get a feel already early in the season that it's a one team in terms of making the right. playoffs. Whoever can win the conference right. probably will get that spot uh, in into the playoffs. And so now Commerce is kind of looking at Midwestern State and hoping someone can knock off MSU because they beat Texas A&M Commerce well, by one point. Well, and that muddies the water a little bit too. So that puts them right back into the thick of it as well. And so, yeah, it, it, we that's what we anticipate to be one team that we're making it into the playoffs. And so, again, as the games progress here over the next few weeks, they really the importance level is extremely high. Let's step aside, take another time out when we come back. We'll see if we get some highlights and also uh, some final statistics for you. And so we will do that after this break. Buffaloes fall tonight by the final score of 15-3 to at home here against Texas A&M Commerce. And we're back after these messages. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. 
Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Well, welcome back to Jay Ferg Field as some of the band members are out on the field here as the Buffaloes fall tonight by a count of 15 to 3 to Commerce. Commerce improves to 3 and 1 in conference play and then also improves on their season mark to 5 and 3 while the Buffaloes fall to 4 and 4 and 3 and 2 in conference play. As we take a look at the stats for tonight's ball game, it looks this way. As the Buffalo is able to muster 225 yards of total offense against this, again, defense that is number one in the conference, they only allow 207, and we had a last-minute update on this, and so that's why it shows 225 yards of offense for the Buffs. 290 for Commerce, 186 of those through the air, 98 for the Buffs through the air, and again, as we talked about, very uncharacteristic for the Buffs as far as their passing game is concerned where Nick Gerber was 12 of 25, 98 yards uh, through the year. He had two interceptions and so had a 64.9% quarterback uh, action in this one tonight. And so, again, time of possession we talked about was 32 minutes in favor of Commerce to 27 minutes for the Buffaloes. And so let's take a look at a few of our highlights from tonight's contest. And, again, this was early. The Buffs opening drive, they are on a nice drive and then a fumble on a handoff to Jordan Johnson, and it's recovered. That stopped that initial drive by the Buffaloes, and again, it took them a while to kind of get things turned back to over uh, in this one. Here is another turnover that takes place. This is Commerce trying to go in the end zone, and they fumble the football. So on their ensuing possession, they too drive down, get to the goal line, and then they fumble the football as well. And so the Buffs are able to recover, and so again, these miscues early in the first quarter of tonight's ball game. Uh, a little bit later on, here's the bus trying to, to get a punt off, and that's blocked. It's recovered uh, for Commerce by uh, Jamel Williams, and so a nice, another turnover, I should say. And then here's a punt that is going to be fair caught, but then it bounces off a WT player as Commerce is able to get it and get great field position, and so that will lead to a field goal for Commerce, and they let five to nothing at that point. Here's another drive for Commerce. And that's the pickoff as Lucas was talking about as Tobias Harris was able to come up with his 16th career interception and come away with that one. Uh, so a nice job by Tobias Harris. Here's the touchdown run, which, again, we question. He stepped out of bounds. Bang, bang play there. Yeah, Close. It, it really was, but he stepped out of bounds, and, and he lost the football as he was trying to touch the pylon. So he didn't even have control on it. And if, if really you want to get technical here a little bit, the same field official is the one that didn't call the personal foul is the one that called the touchdown on that one. One official marked it, and the other one says it was a touchdown. There's an interception as well for Commerce in this one tonight. And, again, just a tough road to hoe against a very, very good Commerce team. As you talk about, Lucas, it's one of those yeah. where, the, again, they have three losses on the season, but uh, two of those are to some really strong teams. And then, of course, their first conference game was a loss to Midwestern State. And, again, next week, West Texas A&M hits the road to take on Texas A&M Kingsville. Uh, the Havelinas uh, on the road, the Buffs will be. And then for uh, Texas A&M Commerce to get a home game, and that should be an exciting one between them and UT Permian Base, in which the Falcons are going to feel like they are in the mix as right. well. Yeah, absolutely. And, again, this is an opportunity for them to make a statement. They made their first statement of the year when they beat WT down at home there in Odessa. And so now another opportunity for them to move up in the conference standings and to go – with what they were claiming, basically, they were the conference champs from a year ago because they played the spring schedule. Yep. And so this would be an opportunity for them to take advantage of that as well. All right, we'll take another timeout. When we come back, we'll get a chance to visit with Buffs head coach Hunter Hughes. You're watching the postgame show here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. WT student-athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. Go Bucks! 
This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. For the taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons, we live for this. Days are built on mornings, and Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings, burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm. Yeah, all right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast, topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades Contact Shim and Dillon Group for your appointment today. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physicians Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery we're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives.
Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. Welcome to Metadrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our HealthMart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Carpet Tech, and we are family. More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? J. Ferg Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guide you every step of the way. That is the J. Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call J. Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are J. Ferg Roofing. We are more. Bud Light, proudly brewed in the heart of Texas. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo, Dumas, and Dalhart, and ask us about our free Whitening for Life program. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. 
Towels get fluffier, showers stay hotter for longer, and our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Well, welcome back to Jay Ferg Field. The Buffaloes fall tonight to Commerce by a final of 15 to 3 in this one. And head coach Hunter Hughes joins us on the postgame show. And coach, the defense played really well, both defenses, obviously. Yeah. And that was theirs was tough to overcome. Yeah, our offense never got into rhythm. Um, never did anything, you know, I didn't think really challenged them. Oh, we had a drive going at first and then fumbled the ball. Uh, they did some good things defensively. And, you know, they got some guys that, uh, uh, played at other levels that are right. down there playing. That's no excuse, though. But um, they're good defense, and uh, our offense, our receivers could not shake free of what they were doing, and um, we struggled to run the football. I mean, I thought, thought we ran the ball well sporadically, but uh, never could get it going where it was uh, um, consistent and uh, rhythmic. Uh, right. You know, the time we did, you know, I, I don't know, it was 15 to 12 to – 12 to 3 or something, and right. we dropped the touchdown pass. Right. Maybe it was 12 0, we dropped the touchdown mm -hmm. pass, but right. it, it would have put us within a yeah. um, one, score. one score, and it yeah. uh, would have been a good answer for us, got us a little momentum. And, um, and you know, our kicking game was, was terrible. I mean, uh, we got the ball hit the, you know, on the return. On the return. The thing is, we practiced that. You hear Peter go straight out of bounds, don't even quit blocking and go straight out of bounds. and and for some reason, our guy didn't do it, and it hit him, and they got the ball, and we're lucky to get the pick off that. But I think we started every drive, if I'm not mistaken, in, in our own territory right. on the defense side in the first half. And right. then we come out and talk about the kickoff and can't tackle nobody, and they get the ball to the 40-yard line. So um, their quarterback, uh, I mean, he missed the first five games that they played. We saw him play against Saginaw Valley, and you could tell he was rusty. Uh, he got a lot better last week, and um, – we knew he was going to continue to get better, and, you know, he makes stuff happen. And, you know, um, he made plays and got him out of uh, some tough situations. And, you know, again, I thought our defense played extremely well. And I, thought our, I thought our offense fought well, but just get didn't play well. Right. Yeah, didn't, get didn't play, drop some balls, and uh, can't do that against a good football team. And then let me tell you, this team is a lot better than their 5-3 and three record. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah. but – and I, I think we're a lot better in our 4-4 four and four record. I just think we just step on our feet all the time. Hunter, a few weeks ago, uh, you, the team was able to bounce back after a heartbreaking loss on the road. And so you you've, you won two in a row before coming into this one. What do you tell the guys in the locker room, knowing that there's still a lot of football to be played left this season, and you got to get a quick bounce back on a road trip next Saturday? You, you can do two things. Your character is really going to show. All right? what, what character does this team have and these players have? You know, I, I told them, you know, the one question that's going to be asked is how do you want to be remembered? You want to be remembered as a team that folded up and decided not to play the last three games? You want to be the team that continued to fight your ass off and go? And um, I think there's a lot of character on this football team, and uh, uh, I'm expecting them to come out and fight their ass off. Yeah. You talked about the defense, uh, Coach, and we're seeing some of those young guys as the season's coming on start to really develop. Michael Smith, we're, we're mentioning his name a lot. Hickerson was uh, making good plays as well. Michael Anoza was uh, doing a good job from the safety spot. Are you seeing that like through the week in practice leading up to the games that some of those young guys are starting to figure things out? Yeah, I mean, I wish we had the same rule that Division One had to play other younger guys. Okay. In Division Two, you get so beat up. I mean, we're a beat up football team. And I, we're not the only one. And that's not an excuse. I don't want anybody to think that I'm making excuses for us. But there's some guys that we could play for three or four games and give them a red shirt like they do in Division One. We don't do that. I don't know why Division Two thinks they don't want to do that, but we would be, we would be able to play a lot more younger guys in that case. Okay, um, for more depth. Yeah, obviously. more depth. And and as you go through this, you know, the rigors of the season, um, it gives you more depth. But yeah, we're seeing those young guys go, and um, I like the improvement. I think Eric Goodman's another one that mm. you know is a young one that that. You can tell he's raw. He needs to put on some more weight, but he's he's a guy that uh, I think can be special for us. And you know, Jamarcus said who who uh, didn't play tonight. He's the same type of mold as Eric Goodman. So, um, yeah, they're getting better, and uh, we're going to keep working and keep challenging them to get better. So, um, all right. 
Final score tonight was 15-3. to And so the Buffaloes, again, next Saturday, they go on the road to take on Texas A&M Kingsville. I want to thank all of the fans for tuning in tonight here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. We want to thank our outstanding broadcast crew, the Thunder Vision crew, for their job tonight. The camera operators, Peyton Stokes, Emma McReynolds, Nicole Williams, Jacob Johnson, and also Daniel Kalunga. The replay operator tonight, Jacob Griffin. And your director tonight was Jamie Abbott. So the broadcast brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau. Final score, a and Commerce wins 15-3. to Thanks so much for watching Buffalo football right here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network.